move away from Martinsville over to the Texas Motor Speedway. Welcome to NASCAR. It's round nine of the regular season and anything can happen here. We're live with USRN Matthew Owens taking us through the beginning along with Josh T and Tom Dillon. Welcome to Texas. And hello one and all, and welcome along to the Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth, Texas. Delighted to have you with us as we get set for NASCAR Cup Series Racing. It's the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. I'm Matthew Owens, delighted to have you with us. Tom Dillon, Josh T with us. Josh Birch will be along soon. Um, first off, let me just say, uh, welcome in to everyone and thank you for having me on here on JB Motorsports. We're also live, of course, on USRN, on Mixer.com and the Mixer app. But this is a brand new feeling for me here on Josh Birch Motorsports without Josh Birch. <laughs> uh, he'll be with us in just a moment. I've got Tom and Josh T with me as we get set or 400 miles of racing from the Texas Motor Speedway. It's been an interesting last couple of weeks in the NASCAR Cup Series with racing on short tracks that have created a lot of conversation about what the short track package has been bringing us. There's been a state of flux, if you will, in the NASCAR world over these last two weeks, but now we come to a big, wide, sweeping, high pace mile and a half speedway, and Tom Dillon, I'm glad to, uh, glad to be with you. It's been a while for the two of us. Uh, glad to have you along for the ride as we come to Texas uh, on this Sunday. W what's the expectations? Well, it's going to be a long race. Uh, I know that for sure. Uh, last couple of races here ran over three hours. We've had a few races uh, at this track running over four hours, actually. So we know it's going to be a pretty long day uh, ahead of us, a long evening ahead of us uh, for us. I think last time we were on a broadcast together was a Super Bowl. Matthew, that yeah. was quite a long uh, weekend, actually. Uh, a long broadcast uh, towards the end. But what a what a day that was. Well, Carl Larson, uh, he definitely comes into this as the man in form uh, in the series, doesn't he? He's picked up one win, four top fives over the uh, course of his NASCAR 2024 Cup Series campaign. So he's, uh, I'm not going to say the man to beat, but certainly uh, a man uh, that I'm expecting uh, to be right up there uh, in the order. But uh, we'll, we'll wait and see. He's on the pole today, and he is the odds-on favorite, no doubt, coming into this race. As Hendrick Motorsports is on this amazing roll, uh, the wave of momentum off their 1-2-3 finish at Martinsville last Sunday. I'll bring in uh, Josh T. as well here. Hello, Josh. Uh, the Hendrick cars do seem to be the heavy favorites, whether you're riding with Larson or you're riding uh, with... William Byron, who won the last time we were at Texas. Chase Elliott finally has shown some speed here the last couple of weeks. Maybe you're riding with him. Alex Bowman, a, li a little bit more of a long shot. If it's not a Hendrick car today, though, Josh, who is it going to be? Hello, uh, Matthew. Hello, Tom. Hello, everyone watching along. Well, first, firstly, I had Cole Bush for a picker winner. That's now huh? changed. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I've got uh, the number five starting on pole, Carl, Carl Larson, and everyone is out on track. The cars are rolling, and 16 top tens for Hendrick, 18 for Joe Gibbs, and 1,024 laps led for Joe Gibbs for racing, compared to 696 for Hendrick Motorsports. But going back, never mind. Matthew, do you want to take us through the grid? Yeah, we'll run through it, and of course, Hendrick and Gibbs have been the two teams that have dominated the season, and they are on the front row. Kyle Larson and Ty Gibbs on the front row for this 400-miler. Row two, a couple of more Toyotas. Christopher Bell and Tyler Reddick. Row three has Chase Briscoe as the fastest qualified Ford for Stuart Haas Racing. William Byron, the most recent Texas winner, rolls off from sixth. Ryan Blaney and Austin Sendrick, a brace of Team Penske Fords, line up in row four. Row five, more Toyotas, Martin Truex Jr. and Daryl Wallace Jr., who was so close to winning here last fall. Denny Hamlin and Ross Chastain start 11th and 12th because, of course, they do start right next to each other. Michael McDowell is in row 7 with Alex Bowman, a couple of Arizona drivers in row 7. Row 8 is Austin Dillon and Carson Hosovar. The rookie Hosovar continues 
to have good qualifying runs. Daniel Suarez and Zane Smith make up row nine. Chris Buescher and Joey Logano start from row 10. 21st is Noah Gregson, and 22nd is Brad Keselowski. 23rd starter is Corey LaJoy. Chase Elliott rolls off from 24th. His first NASCAR Xfinity Series win came here at Texas 10 years ago for Chase Elliott. Josh Berry and Ryan Priest, teammates at SHR, are in row 13. Row 14 is Eric Jones in the Legacy Toyota, along with Todd Gilliland. Harrison Burton is in row 15 with John Hunter Nemechek. Row 16, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Justin Haley from Winnemac, Indiana. Kaz Grala starts 33rd alongside Big Country, as they call him. Austin Hill, the Xfinity Series regular. Kyle Busch crashed in qualifying yesterday. He'll start 35th alongside Ty Dillon, who's back in the Cup Series today. And in the final row, it's Jimmy Johnson, the seven-time Cup Series champion, who's had a lot of success here at Texas in the past, starting along with Kannapolis, North Carolina driver Daniel Hemrick. That's the starting grid. 15 Chevrolets, 14 Fords, and 9 Toyotas in that starting grid of 38 for the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. Yeah. The uh, one and only trip to Texas this year. It moves to the spring this year, uh, this time around, Josh, rather than the fall. So we'll see how that changes track conditions for this field of 38 today. Yeah, absolutely. And they have to put it on the same weekend and half an hour <laughs> later than MotoGP at Austin, Texas for the uh, America's Grand Prix as we go down pit road for the pit road speed check and... Uh, just before I go back to what you were saying about who could win if it wasn't a Hendrix car, Matthew. And this is how much we don't mess around. We started the grid at the same time as Fox, and when you finished, they weren't even onto row four yet. <laughs> but uh, if it's not a Hendrix car, I mean, the obvious one is to go for Denny Hamlin, but we'll see. Uh, Ryan Brony also could be up there as well. But, yeah. Keep an eye on Kyle Busch coming from the back as well. But we'll yeah, see what he can do. Yeah, it will be interesting to watch Kyle come from the back after that crash yesterday. It's been an uneven start to the season for Richard Childress Racing. We'll see Austin Dillon starting in the top half of this grid. Bush starting from well back. We'll see what the RCR cars have up their sleeves today. Uh, so, Tom? Ready to go. We should be getting one to go this time around. And uh, we've got you in turn three here for the start of this race. That's exciting. Blue sky, uh, blue sunshiny skies. That's not an easy thing to say uh, up above. as uh, it's, a, it's a warm day in Texas. They're experiencing an Austin at Coda as well. It is a warm day. We'll see how that affects track conditions as the day wears on, Tom. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, it would suggest that maybe we're going to get a little bit more tire wear than we'd uh, otherwise expect. Getting to the stage going to be important. 80 uh, laps for the first stage, uh, and then actually we get a very uh, extended stage three, if I'm not mistaken, over 100 laps uh, of stage three. So uh, you're going to be getting to that stage three, and then I think this race is really going to be made in those pit stops towards the end of stage three. I, I, that was probably where you're, you're looking here. Yeah, 80 laps of the first stage, 85 the second, and 102 is that final stage. We're running 400 miles today instead of 500. Of course, basically since the origination of the Texas Motor Speedway, races here have been 500 miles. We cut it down to 400 today. Fuel window is projected to be about 70 to 75 laps. So you're more than likely not going to be able to go all three of these stages without stopping for fuel. So that's going to create an interesting pit strategy for all these guys. When do you pit in the stage if it stays green? Do you split the stage in half, or do you try to run through the window and pit at about lap 70 or what have you? Pace car is about to come in. It's Kyle Larson Chevrolet and Ty Gibbs in the bright green Interstate Batteries Toyota on the front row. Larson, the odds-on favorite, coming into the week. Hendrick on a huge tidal wave of momentum off their 1-2-3 finish at Martinsville last week. What's going to happen today? We're going to two-step it in Texas. 
Green flag goes up in the air. It's time to drop the hammer in Fort Worth, Texas. We are underway. Kyle Larson and Ty Gibbs on the front row. Rifle down into turn one with Christopher Bell following. They're through turns one and two, and they're heading towards the back straightaway. Yeah, absolutely. Larson out in front currently with Gibbs as well as they're coming towards you, Tom. Yeah, that one lane starting to form. You've got Carl Larson at the front of the field. Ty Gibbs sitting in second at the moment. Christopher Bell slots into third, but actually it's fourth. It's under a little bit of pressure. Larson's going to lead lap one. Gibbs second, Bell third. They're side by side for fourth. Yep, single file as we've got Bubba Wallace just behind trying to get round Austin Sindrick as we're side by side going down the back straight towards turn three, still side by side. Staying side by side, this is uh, number two car up the inside of the number 23. I think Sindrick's going to get himself up a position here and he does. Yeah, Sindrick does take that spot away. His teammate Ryan Blaney's already made up a spot. Further back, Ross Chastain dives down to make a block on a couple of cars. Yep, and nearly free wide there with the free car of Austin Dillon. And uh, he's changed delivery back to his normal. It's meant to be a different one as we go down back towards turn three. Carl Larson then still in the lead of the race. Got himself four tenths of a second so far. Bell uh, just behind side-by-side -side action. 99 uh, looking around the outside. Won't find a way through here. In fact, to the outside he goes. Yeah, Daniel Suarez screams by Zane Smith to pick up a spot. Yep, still side-by-side. -side. Three wide further back, and that was very close to contact as Larson is leaving them away as we go into turn three. Six tenths to gap. Best lap time, 29.0. So those tyres getting up to temperature, 34s on the inside. The 19 has to slot in behind as well. Everyone seeming, I think I say, formation flying at his stage. That hasn't been the case, Matthew. Yeah, well, look at this. Corey LaJoy bumping, pushing Chase Elliott to turn one. Yep, and still single file. LaJoy just uh, getting a little bit further behind the number nine car as we go around... Turn three now. Bowman dropping a little bit back on the 11 of Hamlin. So Larson's still in the lead. Nine tenths of a second. Now a huge gap he's gaining. Yeah, Larson is off and running well. Gibbs second, Bell third, Reddick fourth, Chase Briscoe fifth. Yeah, and just behind is Blaney, who's looking to get round Chase Briscoe for fifth as we go down the back straight. So still nine tenths of a second. We've got a little bit of battle going on. The number 11 looking at uh, Truex Jr. just ahead of him. Not able to find a way through as of yet. So this, uh, this race is going to be interesting. Darrell Wallace Jr. up to ninth, passing Michael McDowell a moment ago. Mentioned Wallace had a good run here last fall. What about Brad Keselowski trying to make his way from the back there, Josh? Yep, down the inside of the 38 Long John Silvers car. And through goes to 16 of Shane Van Gisbergen as well. Keeping an eye on Carl Busch's progress into 35th at the moment. He's uh, not been able to recover quite as nicely Never as he want from his uh, qualifying mistake and uh, stays where he is. Someone's Meanwhile... got the wrong uh, spotter guide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> the 16 Ty Dillon this week. Um, I, I think Shane's actually on the grounds in Coda. Uh, they were talking to him on the grid uh, before the MotoGP race uh, that uh, I was watching earlier. So Shane was in Austin, Ty Dillon in the 16 this week. But it, it, it's okay. Believe us. But believe me when I say we've done much worse before. It was hiding behind the Formula E track map. <laughs> Oh, so Kyle Larson, the leader, by one second. Ty Gibbs is second. Christopher Bell, third. Tyler Reddick runs fourth. Chase Briscoe, fifth. That top five unchanged here through about the first ten laps. Ryan Blaney is sixth. William Byron, seventh. Eighth is Austin Sendrick. Ninth is Daryl Wallace, Jr. Michael McDowell is tenth. Then comes this battle that we focus in on here between Martin Truex, Jr. and Denny Hamlin to turn one. Yep, Hamlin looks around the outside as we cut back to... Uh... The six of Keselowski side by side with the 38 cars. We go through turn one. Just about able to get to the inside here. The number eight with a fantastic little surge on that inside line. Going to get himself 
up a position here. It's uh, going to be tidy. He's still battling it along down the back straight. They go into turn three. And I think on that outside line, the number six actually is going to get a little bit of a better run of it. They stay side by side, Matthew. Yeah, Bush and Keselowski, two longtime foes. Normally they're doing battle for an up front position, not for 32nd. Yeah, and Bush getting out away in front, getting the lead increasing as he gets that position. Meanwhile, Kyle going. Larson at the front, Tom, has, uh, again, only 11 laps in, but this has been the heavy favorite all week long. Kyle Larson, and he's doing nothing here through practice, through qualifying and the start of this race to make anyone think that he's still not the favorite. Well, it's an effort to dominate an oval race, especially uh, in NASCAR. Plenty of time uh, to go. Still haven't had our first caution. Of course, you'd like to think it won't be a caution this early on into the race. But either way, uh, <laughs> I'm still keeping an eye on Kyle Busch. I don't think he's out of this. 30 second uh, in in the entire field. I mean, he's gained about three positions or so over the course of the last five laps, I want to say. So Kyle Busch, well and truly in this. Yeah, we'll see if he can continue to make progress from the back. Uh, and again, that car heavily damaged from yesterday, and that's why he's starting in the back. Uh, his Richard Childress teammate Austin Dillon has fallen a couple spots off the start. He runs 17th, does Austin Dillon. Really good start to uh, Josh for Carson Hosovar. Mentioned him a lot this season. He's been qualifying extremely well, the rookie, and he's made up a couple of spots here on the start. He's up to 15th. Yeah, absolutely, and if I remember rightly, Bush won the truck race on Friday. Yep, yeah. and then uh, binned it uh, on the Saturday, yesterday, th after that as well, as we're completing another lap. Larson still leading Gibbs, but Gibbs starting to cut into the deficit a little bit. Now, of course, uh, Josh, you've been on for, I think, every one of these NASCAR broadcasts, or just about all of them, to start the season there's been a lot of, well, there was a lot of positive momentum for Ty Gibbs in his sophomore campaign. A lot of people looking at him as he's going to be the next first-time winner. It hasn't happened yet. He's had a down last couple of weeks at tracks. A lot of people thought he would run well at at Richmond and Martinsville. But here he is now, Gibbs, running in the second position. So what do we think about that 54 car today? Yep. Uh, strong in second as well. I think I've missed one because I was sent either to Ringwood or... Well, no, I either went to Ringwood or I've sent to Brandsatz, but Brandsatz was middle of the week, so I might have... That's it. I uh, Easter weekend, I was at Brandsatz for the trucks. That's the one I missed on Easter weekend. Very good. So, Richmond. Yes, yes. that's right. Well, I, I should have known that because I was with Josh for the second half of the race. <laughs> and, 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 you, and you were not along, so I should have known that. Thank you. Uh, but, yeah, Ty, Ty is getting better and better. He's going to win at some point this season, you get the feeling. And maybe it is today uh, as he has had a fast piece on him all weekend long. Running second, one second behind Kyle Larson as we're about to complete lap 17 of 80 in this first stage. Let's pick up the leaders back in turn one. Yeah, absolutely. 1.001 uh, second was the gap as they exit turn two and they head down the back straight towards Tom. They do, and uh, just passing uh, here. There's a couple of cars that actually find themselves in a bit of clean air. Number 20 being one of them. Uh, number uh, 40. Uh, number 40. I'm trying to look through my timing screen. Excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, I don't know. The number 20 and the number 45. There you go. Those are the two. Uh, fallen down a little bit of a way. I could have just looked at the timing tower. A little bit of a way. Uh, gap now about 4.9 seconds to the lead. Uh, uh, Ty Gibbs being the only one, really, who's putting that pressure still on Carl Larson. Yeah, Bell and Reddick have really slipped back, as you mentioned, north of four seconds off the lead now. Bell and Reddick running third and fourth, and it's another two seconds back to Chase Briscoe. Let's keep an eye on Bell and Reddick here. They race up out of turn number four, back down the main straightaway, through the dog leg, and they scream across the line. This is the fight for third, Josh. Yep, fight for third indeed as they were side by side, but four temps is now the gap as we cut to the 14 of Chase Frisco. Oh yeah, sorry, that's mine. 
<laughs> oh, there you go. I, I'm getting used to this track. I was wondering why Matthew wasn't talking. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, Carl Larson still uh, in the lead of the race. One second now uh, to Ty Gibbs. So he has got him in check uh, at the moment. McDowell uh, sitting in 10th position. He's looking uh, maybe ahead to see what he could do uh, to Wallace uh, just ahead of him. Uh, overall, it's been a remarkably clean start to this race, uh, Matthew. Yeah, it really has through 20 laps, and we've had quite a bit of early yellows uh, to begin races at the start of this season, so nice to get 20 laps under the belt here around a Texas racetrack that has produced a lot of cautions the last couple of times we've been here. Here's a fight for 11th. Martin Truex Jr. and Denny Hamlin, Joe Gibbs Racing teammates, are nose to tail just in front of Alex Bowman and Ross Chastain in that scrap. What I really love here... I, I hope everyone else enjoys it. I know I do. This has to be the first radio-style baton-passing broadcast in JV Motorsports history, which I just very much enjoy. I think so, yes. Yeah. Now, now see, so Josh and I, we did this. Josh T and I, we did this in an Xfinity race at Michigan once last year. That was your first time doing the baton passing, the radio style broadcast. Tom, you've done it we've done it at least once, if not a couple of times. Um, so I, I, I actually enjoy that we brought it to the YouTube channel this time around. Yeah, and Christopher Bell, 35 starts at one and a half mile tracks, 36 for Reddick, 2 wins, top 10 21. Tom, take it. Take the baton and you guys can't see it but i'm holding my headphone stand up to the camera take it tom yeah well i mean by telling me to take it you've also uh, used pretty much three quarters of my turn josh so appreciate that <laughs> uh, carl larson <laughs> is uh, second in the lead of the race uh, from gibbs from belt cameras on ryan belaney at the moment see what he can do very much an american way of broadcasting for sure um and you'll be hearing it this way next week on jb motorsports as well if i have that right at talladega where yep. it'll be the usr in simulcast as uh josh and josh are off in long beach for the indycar race um so yeah get, get used to this you'll be hearing it every now and again here on the channel throughout the year but excited to be with you here uh, again josh birch will be uh, hopping aboard, you know it when it becomes the most difficult to do this is in moments like this when Fox has to go to an ad break every 10 laps. That's <laughs> when it becomes the most difficult to do this. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to be in Talladega, but I'm also running the YouTube stream which should be interesting, me commentating on Long Beach and having to manage this YouTube stream. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. I might drop down to the pits. Who knows? That's for this week and to plan not well, uh, that's for next weekend to plan, not for this weekend. This weekend, we're here at Texas, double header, of course, for Texas, with Formula E in Mazzano as Larson a second lead. Oh, we're looking uh, actually uh, at being about, uh, well, about half of the way to our first green flag pit stops here. 35 laps, but we'll be especially halfway. Lap 27 at the moment, so we're not too far off, especially with the 22nd lap as it runs. And uh, I do wonder who's going to jump first on that, because 70 laps, Matthew, very, very close uh, to that sort of 80 lap window for the first stage. Mm -hmm. I wonder if part of the reason why we're seeing a relatively quiet race so far, not too many battles outside of someone like Carl Busch trying to make his way through the field, which, by the way, he's back down to 35th. Uh, I wonder if part of the reason why this has become reasonably quiet it's because people are trying to extend that extra 10 laps or so well and if, of course we don't know if they're looking at splitting the stage we really don't know what these crew chiefs are looking to do now I, I would think that there were some of these crew chiefs that probably came in thinking we might get an early yellow because that seems to be the trend as i mentioned not only this season but also at texas We've been getting a lot of early yellows these last few years around this track. If he got an early yellow, that would make the decision easy. Come in and pit under caution, then go the rest of the way on fuel. But we haven't gotten that. And like you said, we're about to see decisions be made here, I would think, here pretty shortly. Because if you're looking to split the stage, then you'll be in in about 10 laps. Lap 40 of 80 splits it right down the middle, of course. But to your point, if you want to be brave on the tires and the fuel... Maybe you do try to stretch it out and go the distance without pitting. So we'll see. 
what these uh, crew chiefs want to do. Uh, I do have the comment section here to my left. Again, this is brand new for me on JB Motorsports and on USRN, so I'm going to try to keep up with everything as we just seen Denny Hamlin squeeze his way past Michael McDowell at a change for 10th. Charles uh, Fan says, howdy. I'm sure that's Charles Fan says, howdy. Uh, Phillips says, Bush not making much progress after starting from the back. Wrecked the car they unloaded. Yeah, they wrecked yesterday in practice and qualifying. And uh, he is, uh, as Tom just told us as well, not making much progress at all, which is a little bit of a surprise for Kyle Busch, who did win on this track Friday night in the Craftsman Truck Series race. Chase Briscoe has recently been passed by Ryan Blaney. Now William Byron is closing in on the Briscoe machine. And in fact, as they roar off turn number two, they're going to come to you, Tom, and I think Byron's going to make this pass. And down the inside he goes. This should be pretty straightforward for Byron. Goes to the inside line and is ahead of Chase Briscoe. So a fairly easy move made uh, down the inside. Interesting if we are seeing the uh, stints being extended. Why you choose to go for that pass and give yourself clean air. So that would suggest potentially that's not being the case at the moment. But obviously that, that idea of a caution being a factor at some point uh, in the next sort of 30 laps of, uh, of this stage or so. Still just under 50 to go, 47 left in the stage. Uh, obviously, that always hangs overhead. So Larson's starting to run up on some lap traffic here, Josh, as he goes off to turn one. But right on cue as I try to tee you up, this is what makes this so fun and so difficult. I tee you up and they go somewhere else. Yeah, absolutely. That was uh, going down the front stretch. Uh, Chastain and uh, one of the other cars, was it Truex Jr.? I think it was, yes. Yeah, but uh, stages are 80, 85, 102. Nine sets of tyres. Fuel is 62 to 67 laps. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah. So Kyle Larson did just put a lap on Kaz Grala, and now Fox... Oh, bless their hearts. Well, it has been a big week for Kyle Larson, and it's been a very fun week for Kyle Larson. Uh, Josh, I know you were on those broadcasts earlier in the week from Indianapolis, where Hamlin's Larson was in. finally able to uh, get in the Indy car and make test laps around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And uh, he was second quickest on the first day of the open test, wasn't he, Josh? Yeah, absolutely. Day two got cancelled, but Denny Hamlin down into pit road for the first time. But as we see that there on that Fox and 41 of Priest as well, but a lot of cars are coming down pit lane this time. Austin Sendrick is in, so too is Chris Busher. Daryl Wallace Jr. is also in. Wallace peels into his pit box, and now at the top end of pit road, the leader Kyle Larson jumps in. So right at the end of lap 36 is when a lot of these leaders come to pit road, and Larson's blue, white, and red. HendrickCars.com Chevrolet Camaro will make his way down pit road at 55 miles an hour. His teammate William Byron also comes in. Here's Larson finally pulling to a stop in his pit box. Right side tires off and on. Byron also with his right sides on. They'll swing over to the left sides. Tyler Reddick is also in on this lap. Four tires and fuel, the standard stop here for everyone. Larson is away, so to his Reddick, so to his Byron, all looked clean on the stops, and we'll wait for any penalty reports if we get any. Alex Bowman was also in on this lap. Ty Gibbs is yet to pit Tom, so he's the leader. Yeah, inherits the lead after uh, otherwise leading, pretty, uh, otherwise being second pretty much all of the race. So there we go. Uh, first bit of strategy has been uh, has been uh, revealed to us, and that is that majority of people are choosing to split, split this first stage. Oh my word, we've got a fire in the pit lane. It's a pretty huge fire, and uh, I believe it's come out the back of one of the cars. So there's been a big f uh, fuel spill, I think, a line of fuel out the back of one of the cars, and there was a pretty sizable fire. They get it mopped up quickly enough but that's uh, that's quite dramatic that was, well, that was right fire. in 
That was right into Ty Gibbs' pit box, who, of course, as we just said, has not pitted. So if he was planning on coming in this lap, they had to say, no, no, you can't come in. We have a fire in our pit box. So Gibbs has to stay at at least one lap extra on that. You hit the nail right on the head, Tom. That's obviously come out the overflow of a car that was just exiting pit road. And it just so happened to light an inferno right in front of the Ty Gibbs pit crew. And uh, we'll see if Gibbs comes to pit road this time, but that I think had to so. be Maybe. a moment uh, down. for He's his down. crew. Now, I, now, do we do that as accident, or do we put that down to on purpose <laughs> <laughs> as he's down pit road? Yeah, if, if you're able to plan that and execute it, you're a lot smarter than most of the teams on pit road. I'll say that. <laughs> you always deserve as, it. <laughs> so Gibbs does come in everything well in that pit box and it'll be right side tires on that green 54 they'll swing to the left sides left side tires off on on four new Goodyear Eagles on that Toyota Hoffman. slow on the left rear though very slow on the left rear Gibbs finally away it's a slow stop right at the end pit road has been an issue for a lot of these Toyota teams here lately and Kyle Larson has already zoomed on by, and Larson's going to have a large lead now on Ty Gibbs. Still waiting on a few to come to pit road. Chase Elliott, Todd Gilliland, Ty Dillon, Austin Hill, and Daniel Hemrick have yet to come to pit road. So Chase Elliott being shown as the leader. His Hooters number nine coming to you, Tom. Yeah, and crucially, I've got just about enough time. The number nine in the lead of the race, albeit uh, I wonder for how long. So, uh, in theory, everyone good to go to the end of the stage now, apart from those who haven't yet pit, uh, which means I imagine the next pit stop in this phase is going to be the free one. Yes. Yeah, yeah you're right about that. So Kyle Larson will cycle around as the leader here, and he's going to have an even larger lead. In fact, Ty Gibbs, with that slow stop, has not come out second behind Larson. Christopher Bell and Tyler Reddick have jumped Ty Gibbs. So you're going to have Larson the leader. Bell will then be second, Reddick third. And that just goes to show you, Josh, you just can't have mistakes on pit road. Tenths of seconds mean so much on the track, as we know. Yeah, absolutely. Now... Hear me out. Ty Gibbs has green on his car this weekend. Kick mm -hmm. Sauber have green on their car. What both happens, they can't get a pit stop right. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it just the colour green on cars? Well, you know, there was a long time. I don't know if they... So you'll have to tell me if this conspiracy theory or whatever you want to call it uh, did live over in in your neck of the woods but there was a long time race car drivers in america did not want any part of a green race car they thought a green race car was uh, brought bad luck i don't know if you guys had the same over there but that was a that was something for a long time in america do not drive a green race car well obviously our race cars were traditionally green so uh not quite the same sentiment over here but it's interesting Oh, look at that. We're going to another break. <laughs> hey, it's Fox. Yay. Ad break, ad break, ad break. At least it's not... And there is... It was... Wow. Blaney. No, I Blaney, Blaney running it, through Blaney it. Blaney ignited it, yeah. The, the, the heat from Blaney's tyres ignited yeah. it. Uh, and I'm not sure who left that fire alone. Anyway, lap 46 of 267. And it's Chase Elliott who has the lead by 6.7 seconds. Carl Larson... Uh, cycling through the pit stops he's in third uh, that will be the net lead though because first se first second fourth and fifth all haven't yet come into the pits of course chase elliott on this long winless drought looked for a little bit last week that he might win at martinsville he led towards the middle and late portions of the race ended up finishing third and elliott and this nine team just trying to build momentum here josh and so far he's the leader but not on merit here at texas yeah absolutely still has to come down pit road has the lead by 7.1 seconds larson behind so only the top two required to pit and chastain going down the inside to get his lap back on elliot tom yeah absolutely and uh well now it will be interesting to see 
when these front runners do decide to pick Carl Larson for what it's worth. Uh, has gone fastest in this race and is one of the few cars in this top five, the only car in the top five actually, uh, apart from Christopher Bell, that's lapping in the 29 second mark, around the 29 second mark. So he is significantly faster with those new boots on. Yeah, he absolutely is that. And he is only 11 seconds behind Elliot. So clearly Alan Gustafson in this nine team trying a much different strategy going off strategy with everyone else we'll see what the end game on that is because again unless he's in full fuel save mode oh we have a yellow caution is out Jimmy and it's johnson. jimmy johnson spinning on the exit of turn four he loops it around picks it up grabs a gear everyone avoids the seven time cup series champion and this is terrific news for chase elliott and other drivers that have not stopped like todd gilliland austin hill and daniel hemrick because they were able to stay out for this longer amount of time all the other leaders had already come in They've made give or take 15 laps on this set of tires, so you have to think they'll probably pit under this yellow. Yep. This is terrific news for guys like Elliott and Gilliland, and it's Jimmy Johnson who spun to bring out the day's first caution. And it's a good job. I didn't say what I was planning to say uh, after you, Matthew, which was the nine team is hoping for a caution. Well, <laughs> here it is, and hopefully... Uh, this could be perfect timing for Mr. Birch because the MotoGP stream finished a couple of minutes ago, so Ooh. he should hop in in a couple of minutes and be able to take over the stream. But here's a replay of what happened at turn four. He just lost it on his own. Yeah, it's he just lost weird. it, didn't he, Tom? I, I need to see another replay. I, I don't know what happened. Looks like maybe as he was applying throttle again out of the corner, listening here, that he's just lost it again. Now, stump me. Because we're under caution, Tom. We can we can do this. Now, JB. Oh. Now, JB doesn't rewind. have this, but I'm fantastic. Let's watch it again. <laughs> Here's a replay, <laughs> Tom. Mid corner, he'd already caught the slide on. So I would suggest here actually that he's got loose mid corner, uh, and then eventually just not been able to catch it especially as he gets on the exit if i'm not mistaken uh let me find out for you jimmy johnson was he one of our drivers who had come into the pits he was so maybe those tires were just a tad cool on board with him again through the corner he goes and yeah. just gets upset in the middle of the corner and then just lose it it is a bizarre crash don't get me wrong um almost like he caught a bump i think well that and that's very possible because this track is very rough in nature it's got a lot of character to it so yeah you can make the case that maybe he did just hit a bump the wrong way and of course this racetrack is one of the most difficult to set the car up for uh tom because the ends of the racetrack are totally different turns one and two 20 degrees of banking it's really a two groove racetrack turns three and four it's more of a three groove racetrack with four extra degrees of banking 24 degrees of banking in turns three and four so they're totally different on each end of the track tom and it does make it very difficult to set the car up for this racetrack and uh i think jimmy just struggled to get through turns three and four right there sounds like uh joshua birch struggled to get into the box but we are going to be joined by him uh, in in that moment. Hello. Hello, perfect timing Hello. jb uh, perfect timing as always. Uh, I'm just setting up on my end, so it's already uh, for me in. to take over. But I'm going to have to close and reopen my Discord. It's crashed on me. Nice. So enjoy, guys. And more cars coming down for some more tyres and a splash of fuel, possibly. Well, now, interestingly enough, we did not see all the leaders come back down. Now, Ryan Blaney and Martin Truex Jr. have come in. But I thought we'd see a lot of the leaders like Larson Bell, Reddick, and Gibbs come in because they had made about 15 laps on those tires, but they're choosing to uh, take track position over fresh tires here. They're going to stay out and take the lead. It's going to put Blaney and Elliott and McDowell, Truex, and these guys well into the pack for this upcoming restart. Yeah, absolutely. And Tom? 
uh, that was a replay of a replay, so there's a re-replay as everyone comes out on the track back from having pit stops. But uh, yeah, it is good that I'm able to do that. The power of having the skybox in the same place of the TV. <laughs> Hi. Hello. I am ready for changeover in a second, if everybody is ready to do that. I am ready, and uh, while uh, uh, Matthew was going through the grid, I did something special, and I set up the stream right back screen. The what? The what? The who? The uh, B right back screen, Joe. The stream on break screen. Oh, we don't need it! Press button 8! I've got rid of go, my... Go to the full battle screen, with all the timing monitors and all that lot, and then you'll see. Okay. Because I have the ability uh, to just take over the stream. That's how I can do it. So uh, there doesn't need to be anything. Trex Junior down pit road. We'll be right back. Josh, see you in a minute. Started. So if you've pressed stop, I should take over. And we'll wait to double check. And we'll keep talking. As we're seeing cars down pit road, I have taken over. Excellent. So I'll hand back over uh, to Matthew and I'll come back once everything is fully set up and sweet. Okay. Thank you uh, for that. Um, Tom, did you understand any of that? <laughs> Vaguely. Uh, but, you know, motor motoring along. Uh, yeah, it's been a fascinating race. Just so with far. It. I've lost my television picture, so. I can't tell you much about it. I'll be frankly honest with you. There we go. I've got him back. That's uh, that's fantastic. Uh, so, Martin Trex Jr. in the lead of the race, but on pit road, if you're just joining us. Uh, obviously, I know we've had to switch over our stream. If you're just joining us, we have had a caution. Pretty uh, pointless caution, actually, because Jimmy Johnson was... Uh, pointing the right way once again and back at racing speed by the time uh, the caution had been thrown. However, uh, we are in the caution lap 53 of 267 uh, of this uh, Automotive 400, Echo Park Automotive 400. You that's just... right. Yeah, that's right. You get you get the full name in. Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. Uh-huh. He's new, isn't he? <laughs> You get that full name in. The full long name. It's this long. Oh, Lord. So if I oh, do this, him. and Matthew's in vision, and I've just got to finish by getting the timing tower working uh, with the correct graphic by pressing that one. It shows into yellow, press that, and we're there. Hi, everyone, I'm back. If you're listening to us on USB and JB, hello. Right, now, Trex down pit lane, I've had you on in a monitor after an end of a brilliant MotoGP as Truex is going to change all four tyres here down pit lane. So I have been watching Kyle Larson lead out front quite boringly, I must say. Uh, so that was great. But what have I missed? Not well, a lot, actually. Yeah, I, I was going to say, let's not all of us start at once. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Larson has led comfortably from pole. Ty Gibbs was second, uh, but had a very slow green flag pit stop and has fallen well down the order, actually, now, Ty Gibbs. And I think Fine. he's actually think come fire. down pit road uh, mm. under this caution. So Gibbs is going to be at the tail end of the pack. There was a fire on pit road, but all was well, thankfully. And I think we are just about set to get back underway here. And we're going to have about a 26 lap dash to the end of the stage. Come into the green. So we're going to have the advantage. Are they going to go to ad break on Fox and miss the restart? Surely not. Come on. I think they are, you know. They're going to miss the restart. Oh my God, what have they done? I don't know how delayed you are, John. I'm not, I can't be that delayed, am I? I use the times two function. Well, we've got. Oh uh, I dear. am delayed. Oh, yeah. Right, we've gone green. Away we go, down towards turn one. Larson's got the lead. Bell's just keeping him close through the first two corners as well. Then he's going to have the advantage back through. I'll tell you what, JT, I'll hand pictures back to you and just, just switch it on. 
and they can see what's going on, and I'll go fix whatever this problem is. But it's five wide further back. Larson leads Bell, it's Reddick, been... Byron, Hamlin, Briscoe up to sixth position. Chase Elliott, Blaney coming in as well. As now you get the pictures back as I go sort them as well. But it's lead of the race for Larson. Five tenths to Christopher Bell as they come through the back stretch. I'll hand it over to the guys. Mine's not the live one, so I'll turn mine off. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Larson clear and away off that restart. Bell second, Reddick third, Hamlin fourth, Briscoe fifth, and then you've got the guys that came to pit road under that caution, Tom, like Michael McDowell. He's on a little fresher tires in that yellow 34, and he's trying to make up ground. He is, and he's made up a little bit of ground already, already up in to 10th. Not lost a bit of ground, though, down into 11th. Uh, so he you know, gets overtaken relatively quickly. Also move as Jerry Gargano gets up in to 19th position. Carl Larson, though, uh, doing a remarkable job of controlling this race so far. And after all of the pit stop conundrums, he's back in to the lead. Here is a battle as the 11 looks to the inside. Can't quite squeeze it. It's way through, though. That's Denny Hamlin going after Tyler Reddick, Josh. And uh, Hamlin has slowly but surely, methodically made his way towards the front. That's what Denny Hamlin does. Yeah, absolutely. Hamlin going down low on Reddick and gets third place. So that's Hamlin up to third. That Aubergine Yahoo Toyota up to the third position. Now he'll try to run down his teammate. Christopher Bell. You've got three Toyotas lined up second, third, and fourth here behind the Chevrolet of Larson and ahead of the front-running Ford of Chase Briscoe in fifth. Let's pick up Daryl Wallace Jr. battling for 11th, Josh, with Todd Gilliland. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Oh, yeah. As we cut to Larson still out in front, but a little bit of a battle going on there with Bubba Wallace in 11th. Really close as uh, we've got things working again, JT. Thank you. So you can pop your camera back to you. And uh, we've got the action back up and running. So, there we go. Smooth, isn't it? Well, anyway, I, Megan had accidentally not done it right. So that's what was going on there. So uh, the laptop had frozen. It, it, I, didn't, I forgot to refresh it when I put the laptop up. So it wasn't showing live pictures. Anyway, right. Hi, everyone. Let's get that again, shall we? Uh, Hello. Welcome back. So this is basically just going to be a load of fun because I've joined late. I'm not stepping on Matthew's toes here at all. He's calling on USN. He was here first. He gets the big ones. And I'll just have some fun in the background. And then, Matthew, I will ask you one question. Are you looking forward to next week? Because you get the, the whole shebang with Matt White. Oh. Oh, I'm ready to go. I, I can't wait. Talladega, always one of our favorite visits. We are ready to go. We were, we were talking earlier, too, uh, just to the folks that had tuned in early for this race. I, I hope they're ready for the American-style baton-passing radio broadcast of next week. It'll be kind of a new listen uh, for the viewers here on JBM. It'll be fun, though. Can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. We'll have a different type of screen next week as well. It won't be cameras, obviously, because it'll be radio to allow Matt White, whose camera face it was upside down last time we joined the box. Uh, so <laughs> it will be different. It will be a radio commentary, but we're going to have so much timing screens, you won't believe it. So you're going to have the entire field's timing screen coming in. And then you're going to have also uh, the race control information, everything. And there's so many drives up high as well. And coming down low, Matthew, so this is going to be three wide for the back. And that's the three car, Dylan, coming back in and making some positions. And the 99 getting completely forced out of Daniel Suarez. And he's losing three places. Yeah, Daniel Suarez, uh, he nearly made contact with Eric Jones. Put Suarez up the banking, losing positions. Corey LaJoy goes by. Brad Keselowski will go by. Now Kaz Grala will go through. So Suarez, not a very good last 30 seconds for the winner from Atlanta earlier this year. As we're down to 16 laps to go here in this stage. I absolutely love Fox giving us the stereotypical <laughs> Texas music. Thank you. I was wondering where that was oh, coming yes, from. Oh, yes, and the, shot, the shots of meat. Because nothing in Texas, nothing says Texas more than just a bunch of meat. I came back from the MotoGP Texas right now. There's legitimately people barbecuing out there on the track. It's unbelievable. They've just put barbecues in and everything, but it was a great race. 
Hello. I want to say hello, Tom, as well. Nice to have you back. Since yes. Tom's been, uh... Hello, Josh. Thank you for thank you for having me. It's been uh, an enjoyable race so far. Uh, lap 67, as Matthew said, not long to go. Uh, in the stage, watching uh, Ryan Blaney try and chase, have to chase Elliot at the moment. Uh, Elliot has actually done a pretty good job, hasn't he, of being where he is uh, leading this race, uh, albeit briefly. Mm, just a little bit. Where is he now, Elliot? Down seventh position. Larson got that lead after the pit stop fumble, but it's still so much further back as well. And I'll regroup during the end of this stage, and then stage two and three, I'll be right with you. Uh, caught up when it restarts, but right now it's uh, all catch up. I presume Hamlin's doing quite well as well in third position. He does well at these sort of mini tracks that we go. What do you call the intermediate layouts we have here? Yeah, the the intermediate mile and a half. What we used to call them cookie cutters all the time because they <laughs> all looked and raced the same. They're no longer that because they've all gotten so much character about them, especially Texas. There's nothing cookie cutter about this racetrack with the different ends, uh, one and two different from three and four. Uh, but yeah, just the intermediate tracks. Um, and yeah, you're right. Denny Hamlin loves these kinds of racetracks. And uh, he has gathered in quite a bit of positions from the start. Josh, you might have this. Josh T, you might have this. I don't have it right at my fingertips. But he started outside the top ten half. And he has motored his way up into the third position. So it's been a methodical climb in this opening stage for the 11 car. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely started outside of the top 10. And I can get it here. Uh, the 11 of Denny Hamlin started 11th. Yeah, ah. there you go. <laughs> Ironic number. That really. was a very quick <laughs> search into the Google. That should have been that should have been easy to remember actually. That's, so that's poor form on my end. Uh, <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, he a methodical charge to the front here from Hamlin. He's going to be a contender before this race is up. Uh, we did just have a change for the sixth position. Chase Elliott got by William Byron and Tom. I know you were looking at that nine car a lot in the uh, early portion of this stage before the caution, thinking that the, well thinking rightfully so that they had gone on a different strategy with that nine car tom and it's actually worked out that caution came at a good time for them and now he's on fresher tires than anyone he's racing with and he's climbed up to six yeah it's a good observation and uh he, he definitely puts himself into a good position will be interesting only nine to go in the stage does he come into the pits at the stage point because Realistically you, can, realistically, you can save yourself a set of tyres and uh, work out that way. Number 12 getting uh, around, I believe, I was going to say lap traffic, but no, William Byron uh, looking like he's standing still at the moment. So Blaney's through uh, there. But yeah, as for Chase Elliott, he's in a fantastic spot right now. But the problem is the stage uh, caution is going to sort of reset everything and uh, he'll lose his vantage and basically just have to say, yeah, I got up to six. That was it. Yeah, we'll see. He's, I think he's going to run down Chase Briscoe before the stage is over. Now, if he can pass Briscoe, that's a different story. But I think he is going to get to Briscoe. Briscoe having one of his best runs of the entire season here. Of course, he's had good success at Texas in the past. Running in the fifth position is Briscoe as we focus in on Denny Hamlin running third, trying to run down his teammate Christopher Bell. But I don't think he's going to have enough time to do that he's about nine tenths of a second well no i can't do math make that seven tenths of a second behind bell and car links we would call it about six uh with seven to go here in the stage 32 cars mr birch on the lead lap we watched kyle bush a lot early after crashing yesterday and qualifying started at the back he has made no progress and he runs 33rd one lap down yeah, and it was Josh T's pick a winner, actually, and, his, and Kyle just had, had that crash in practice, spare car to the back. Now he's fighting his way through, lap down. He will get the free pass, though, which I think is crucial uh, as well, because Suarez just about holding off Kyle Larson on the lap traffic front there with six to go. As we see him move to the inside, that's oh. Gregson making a move. JT? Spoiler alert, I changed it. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Uh, I thought you might have, to be fair. I thought, how long is he going to last before he changes his pick a winner? Not long, apparently. I uh, changed it at what time? Let me look. As we've got a battle out on track. Blaney on the low side. Chase Elliott on the outside. I changed it at 4.06. There you go. Well, that, yeah. that's well done, then. 
Well, that, uh, that's extremely well done. Uh, uh, 36 minutes after I got out of bed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woke up, saw what oh, happened. Very good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, Elliot, I, I was talking about him running down Briscoe. He hasn't done that, but he has been run down by Ryan Blaney. He's held off Blaney. Uh, Tom made mention Blaney a couple laps ago. He got by William Byron as if the 24 car was stuck to a stump. So Blaney's going somewhere here at the tail end of this stage. Okay, doesn't it? Nine tenths right behind. Larson holding it up. Three to go at the line. This is looking okay. Bell might have an attack yet. Here's Sally Reddick. Fourth place. Got back up actually after starting. Well, highest is third, lowest 15. So got back up to fourth is okay, but that was for the, uh, the pit stop benefits. And I see Jimmy Johnson back. Terrible to see he's down two laps. Yeah, he was the one that brought out our first caution there. Only caution so far of the stage with his solo spin on the exit of turn number four. We're down to two laps to go in the stage. Kyle Larson's lead on Christopher Bell remains nine tenths of a second. Hamlin third, Reddick fourth, Briscoe fifth. Daryl Wallace Jr. holding down tenth, the final points paying position. By the way, for you Ty Gibbs fans, he has not made up ground on fresh tires after pitting under the caution. He is back in 21st as we're on the last lap of the stage. Whoa, boy, Tom. Ryan Blaney blasting by Chase Elliott in turn three. Uh, that's a bit of a surprise considering Chase Elliott's tyre situation. We think it's better uh, than Blaney. Blaney has made two stops, so he uh, stopped under that pit stop. Uh, stage about to end, one lap to go of it. Carl Larson then uh, looks like he's going to be wrapped on for a stage victory. Uh, cameras are going to pan it to him as he comes up to the line, Matthew. Yeah, so Kyle Larson started on the pole. He has dominated this stage. And the odds-on favorite is going to come to the green and white checkered flag for his fifth stage win of the early season. Larson takes the stage. JB ahead of Bell, Hamlin, Reddick, and Briscoe. First stage completed with only one caution then. And then the second closes out. Kyle Larson taking more and more dominations. But finally, after some up and down moments, as you say, in the early season, he's had stage wins. And that's where he's competitive. Can he go the whole hog and get a race win? We'll find out soon as we head into the cool down. After that top five, Blaney, Elliott, McDowell. Michael McDowell's looking really good in eighth place, can I just point out? Best we've seen him run since the 500. Uh, and even a week later, actually, at Atlanta, when he stuck it on pole position after Logano got pole for the 500, McDowell was on pole for Atlanta. Then he dropped back after that when we hit the short tracks. Didn't work out at all. Um, Byron, as Tom said, dropping down to ninth. Bubba Wallace in 10th position as well. And then Chastain just outside of it. Free pass, correct me if I'm wrong, JT, should go to Kyle Busch. Although I noticed Suarez is also... F oh, it is Kyle Busch, good. So that put him back on the lead lap and hopefully can start making positions up when we head back to the green. Which well, should be in about 10 minutes. Yes. Anyone for a cuppa? Uh, let's see. Uh, Philip in the comments section. When this track opened, they made a big deal out of the suites in turn three, which they definitely did. I think they're a condominium you can buy. Most uh, must not have been very popular because I have not heard much about them lately. That, that's very true. This was a very controversial track when it first came on board in the late 1990s uh, with the new quad oval look. Put all the suites and the big... Yeah. Uh, towers along the front straightaway with that quad oval look rather than just a straight straightaway. Uh, in the Mixler chat, Hockey Expert is here with us saying hi. So hi to you. Uh, saw you were in last night for our uh, hockey game, which was terrific with Jarek Rubel on the call. Glad you've joined us today as we are one stage in to, what is it, Tom? The Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. I know you love that name. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I, what a fantastic name. Uh, I will say as well, the point that I was just about to make before it's completely flown over my head, I was going to say something and it's I've gone. completely forgotten it. So that's not, oh. yeah, that's not good. I'll remember it in a moment. No doubt I'll remember it when we're off on a tangent talking about something else. Yeah, that's, that's right. interesting. Oh, yes, this track, a little bit controversial IndyCar wise as well, because yeah. of course uh, you'll have to be a little bit more detailed than I am, but they put that stuff on the outside, didn't they, to help NASCAR? <laughs> created uh, a one-line yeah. racetrack for a couple of uh, couple of years and that's been a, a problem around here not so much a problem with nascar though 
It was incredible yeah, they... last year, though, but they've got rid of it now. Yeah, they put the PJ1 in the upper part of the banking to help the stock cars try to make it a three- or four-groove track, which it failed to do. But then, while doing that, it also ruined the racing for IndyCar here for a couple of years. It then got better. We had two terrific IndyCar races in a row at Texas, and then what did they do? They scrapped it off the calendar, because of course. I know. Stupid. We can't have nice things. We, we have, and, and uh, anyone would tell you this, anyone that thinks, you know, in a straight line will tell you this, Texas Motor Speedway has been light years better for IndyCar than it has been for NASCAR, but the higher-ups at Texas Motor Speedway never wanted that. They just wanted IndyCar races to say they had IndyCar races, but they want their racing to be great for NASCAR. It's been okay at times. Um, but it was great for IndyCar, but they really never cared about that. They wanted it to be great for NASCAR, which it never really has been. It's been good for NASCAR, uh, but of course, over the last couple of years, it hasn't even been that for NASCAR. <laughs> it's been very bad. Yeah. Everyone hates this racetrack, wants to see it blown to smithereens. Um, well, they're trying. We'll they, 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 they took down the scoring tower, so they are trying. Yeah. <laughs> little and, by little. Uh, it's gone, look, for the, for the webcam we've got from the track here as well. Uh, this weekend. Not that it's updating yes. much. Not as good as Bristol's. No, it's not. Bristol's was no, amazing. Not. Bristol, we were Bristol's. live. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to get back to that later. What have they done? What, what, what is Fox? There we go. Transfer. Tran <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, going back to uh, what you guys were saying about the sweets on turn three, there's also something different here as well, which isn't normally seen at other circuits and speedways the fort worth fire department has a station here what? and they crew it where uh, throughout the weekend on the outside of turn one it's the mm. only it's the only times they crew it is on the uh, race weekend but yes they do have a fire department station here jt your tandage is going as bad as bad as somebody else so, <laughs> you're getting dangerously close there, my friend, as they head down pit road. Are they going to go down pit lane? No. So, Hamlin pits. He's got the first stop. Bell's in. Oh, they are going down pit road. Since the start of the race, saying he's struggling to get it turned. He has to get off throttle too early. Air pressure adjustment and four. Ross Chastain's team, you just met the boys going over the wall right now. He's a little bit looser over the bumps. Needs a little bit of help there, Regan. Christopher Bell in the 20 car needs to be a little bit freer in turns three and four, especially the wind is pushing him too tight at that end of the racetrack. And Kyle Larson, your leader, a little bit tight in three and four, but edgy in one and two. Who's going to get the runoff pit road? It looked like to me Truex has got the lead. Lars has dropped one as well. Ten places, Truex. Matt, that was brilliant. Yeah, they took two tires on that 19. So this, I was wondering when this is going to happen for the first time. Track position is so important around this track. It's so difficult to pass around here. I was wondering who the first to take a gamble on two tires. Truex has done it, but he's not going to be the leader, it doesn't look like, because Ryan Blaney has stayed out. So not only do you have Truex taking two tires, but you have Blaney staying out try to get that track position and hope to hold on to it. So uh, the second stage coming up at 85 laps in duration. It'll take us to lap 165. Uh, there is 81 laps to go, so we should be green with 80 to go to match that as stage one. Stage two will run for 102 laps. And I'll tell you what, when I saw that this race was due to finish, the broadcast was due to finish at 11 o'clock, uh, UK time, I first went, hmm, I don't think so. Forgetting that we went on there at 8.30, that's 9.30, 10.30, and then it's been, well, it's about two and a half hours only, so I don't know. It's a bit weird. Is it a quick race usually, Matthew? Um, well, th thank the good heavens, we have taken this race from 500 miles to 400. Yeah. So we o we've only done that once. We only... Only one time have we ran at Texas 400 miles. Uh, that was last year. So I'll be interested to see how quick it goes. Now, last year, it was a longer race because it was a playoff race, and we had a lot of yellow. But again, we've had a lot of yellow here at Texas in the past handful of years. So, Yes, it was 11 yellows last time out. Uh, the most was 16 in 2022 in the September race. 
as well. The Furious was two, but we're not going to have that thanks to the stage breaks. So, no. 11 cautions last time out. Blimey, that's insane. Yeah, yeah. This Ever since the reconfiguration of this track and then the introduction to the new car to this track, it's been a rash of yellow fever, for sure. 20 degree banking is turn one and two. Turn three and four is a four degree higher at 24 as well. But the bank of the straightaway isn't even straight. It's five degree of banking still there. It's sort of like a trial. Like we, they've tried to mimic Daytona, but shrink it. And it has it hasn't really worked as well out there on the circuit, but it's it's forty third it's it's forty fourth race today. They've done forty three in total as our TV pictures went off for a second, uh, as well. We had twenty six different winners here uh, to come into it, but looking at it, it's uh, did we beat the qualifying record of two hundred mile an hour yesterday? No, 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 no. No. <laughs> no. Oh, well, I was hopeful for a second. We didn't get no, close we, by the looks of it, did we? No, I don't think Miles. we're going to break that for a long, long time until they add horsepower to these cars, which NASCAR does not seem to want to do because of the uh, money it would cost to do that. The field uh, averaging, that, by the way, right now about 180. So That was the last time we had a qualifying lap in the Cup Series over 200 miles an hour when Ryan Blaney here, what was that, 2018, 17, something in that area, went 200.5. Uh, that was the last time we had a qualifying lap turned over 200 in the Cup Series. Wow. I miss I I remember the days when we were going fast. Although, NASCAR, we talked about this. Oh, hang on. We talked about this last time out, Matthew, didn't we? Uh, during one of the cautions that NASCAR don't seem to want to let everybody run different types of setups because then it looks like, oh, now we've got this situation. I think as well, Ben Schneider talks about it. You don't want them to go. NASCAR want to say, look, our championship is decided the last day on the last lap every single year and everybody else here can win. But the difference is they're forced into the same type of setups and same types of cars because if anybody did do individuals, the field would be massively different. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they want to keep, they want to have the parity up. They don't want the high spending teams to spend 10, 20 times the amount as the lower funded teams as we had uh, Zane Smith leave pit road Ooh. with his uh, fuel can still attached. So that's a penalty to Zane Smith, the rookie to the out rear. of Huntington Beach, California. Uh, but yeah, it, it's absolutely right. We've we seen it back in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s when there was not a spec set up, if you will. Um, you would see all the best teams would run circles around everyone else. That's not what they want. Now they, they want the best teams to still be the best teams. And they are, as we mentioned earlier at the top of the show, Hendrick and Gibbs has dominated this season. They're the best teams and they're having the best seasons to this point, but they do want the field to be tightly bunched together as much as possible. So you're absolutely right on that. Stage two is going to be less than uh, stage one. Go on couple of penalties the 71 to the rear for moving equipment and the 38 for uh, equipment interference okay so yeah that would be uh zane smith taking the fuel can out that we've seen and then i did not i did not see that about todd gilliland uh what the equipment interference was for him so Anyway, coming to the green to get this middle stage started. Green flag is unfurled. Two cars stayed out under the caution. Ryan Blaney and Austin Hill, and they lead the field to turn one. Also, Chris Buescher and Ty Gibbs stayed out. So, in fact, JB, it was the top four that stayed out, and it's Blaney that leads the way. Yeah, and Buescher was definitely having to go defensive against Larson after turn one. Larson now moving down the low line, but Buescher's going to take the inside to Gibbs into three and four, and he's blocked off that of Larson. He's completely stuck in P5 as well, but it's Austin Hill who's got the lead of the race, but Blaney, I believe, has taken it coming out of three and four. The camera would rather look at uh, Blaney's family than actually look at the overtake on the track. So Blaney takes the lead while we were looking at what looked to be a very beautiful woman. Unbelievable. And people saying an NBC are bad. This is what we'll get if an IndyCar get it. I mean, it was a split screen, to be fair. I mean, your, your eyes 
I mean, you have two eyes. Yeah, but they went split <laughs> screen crazy. too late. They went split screen too late. By the time we split the screen, he'd made the move. And look at that, three wide into turn one. That's Brad Keselowski getting involved in that. Hamlin with Truex and Bell, but uh, further back as well. We just saw Brad Keselowski, who said in 25th position, I don't want to go three wide. He was going three wide, and there was three wide further up. You've got no choice in the matter if we do end up going three wide as Byron makes a move on the inside of McDowell. Four tenths. Oh, and nearly touches the back action of Bell. Yeah, he got a bit uh, over speed there. Uh, and the camera looks at uh, instead the number 19 car uh, as he makes his way around. That's Truex Jr. Side by side action between the 24 and the 20. 24 on the inside line he is able to squeeze his way through. So there's no uh, major, uh, drama there. Byron getting past whoop, whoop, whoop. Bell then, but Bell's back at him. <laughs> yeah, you said no major drama. Split second early on that. <laughs> wow. Uh, Bell with a counter, but Byron holds on to that position. Uh, this is when you got to go on these restarts. You're not going to have better handling of your car at any point of the race and on these restarts with fresh tires. And these guys are getting on with the getting gone as we've got a fight for second coming out of turn number two. Larson takes the outside line, really does tire to get through again on Hill and Hill backs out. He's got no tire, remember? So that should be good. Larson up to second. How long's Blaney going to hold that? He's pulled out a 1.3 second advantage at the front, but I don't think he's got the gumption. Larson wants to get back to the front and control this one. How long have we got left? 72, 72 laps left of stage two, and it's only lap 94 of the race. Everybody is going to have to make another stop for tires and fuel before this stage is up. Now Blaney's going to have to make it sooner than everybody else. He's been on his tires for about 40 laps. So you would expect he's going to have to come in probably around lap 30 of this stage thereabouts where everybody else can probably go to about 50 or 60. So it's an interesting strategy call from the 12 team, but track position so important here. They wanted to get out front, see what they could do with clean air on the nose of that Mustang. Austin Hill is going to be the stopper in the bottle right here with everybody charging at him in that 33, by the way. Reddick got ahead up into 10th position past Chastain. Hamlin's cleared both Busher and Gibbs on this lap, puts himself into fourth. Hill's dropping back as they come across the control line once more. And side by side in the midfield as Bubba Wallace holds off the 14 as well of Chris Busher through one. In fact, the 47 is going to come for a little bit of it as uh, Ricky Steinhardt's going to have a go. And now Byron side by side with Truex out of two and three. Down the back straight to three. And a little kiss. Second kiss. Third kiss. And by the time we get to turn three, they're at third base. I've sent Matthew Owens off for those listening on the radio. Oh, how, can, how can I follow that up? <laughs> Tom, say something, please. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a replay to uh, save us from the drama. What happened here? This is the 14 uh, on the inside line, 23 to the outside. And uh, well, I'm not really sure what happened there. The 23 was very slow. I can tell you that. He was on the high line, almost didn't want to commit, maybe. Mm. He's, and that's the 33 doing the same problem now. Oh, yeah, this is a big issue for Austin Ooh. Hill as Ross Chastain comes right up underneath this spoiler. Austin Hill's on old tires. He's out of the fast line. Everyone is blowing by Austin Hill, the Xfinity Series regular. And like I said, he is very much the stopper in the bottle. Bell just got by him. Chastain got by him. Michael McDowell gets by him. And now McDowell gets right up underneath the Ross Chastain spoiler. Yep, just remembered as well that their name's on the top of the windscreen. Second week running, I forgot that. Josh is going to have to write me a note and stick it on the comments box. Chastain on the high line. McDowell going to lose out down low. Chastain with much better speed through the trioval into turn one and shuts the door on him. Blaney only three tenths now to Larson as we come back to the front. Fox going to a break. We're not because this is getting tasty. Don't show us the crowd. Oh, for God's sake, I hate Fox Sports. When, please tell me, when does NBC come over? Because they don't do this that much. I know uh, nothing but commercials, but still. No, NBC's production is much better. Now, the booth, not so much. 
but the production is but but the booth is getting better because yeah. Lee Diffie is taking over for Rick Allen, thank God. But anyway, let's focus on this battle for the lead because charging, charging, charging is Kyle Larson. He's gonna have a peek to the inside of Ryan Blaney as they sail off into turn number three. And here is Larson looking for the lead. Dominant car of the day is gonna go back to the front here. Blaney, I'm not sure, is gonna be able to put up that big of a fight here. And it's lap Caution. 100. Caution's out. So that took a while to come out on our screens because the timing tower didn't want to accept it. It was going yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green. It wouldn't want to go. Uh, oh, and that's the 48 of oh. Bowman. Shh, he's, uh, oh, and that's the 42. Nemechek. Nemechek in. They've, well, hang on. Yeah, John Hunter Nemechek and Alex Bowman have had a big coming together. That's heavy damage to the nose of Alex Bowman. And uh, I think... Well, we'll wait. We'll wait to see what happened here, uh, because that's got to be day, don't you? Oh, another one. Heavy Bell. damage. Bell. Oh, Christopher Bell also damaged. My goodness. I reckon that's a three-way pile at mid corner. Let's take a look at it. So, oh no, Bell, oh, Bell dead sideways. Oh. Same crash as Jimmy Johnson, actually. Yeah, same it's just a worse exact result. place. Another that one. Jimmy lost it. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Tom. And there was a and there was a further crash behind, so Bell loses it all on his own. But look further back because that's where Bowman's going to get spun round as well in the middle of the pack. There you go, Bell. Uh, ah, hang oh. on a minute, Bowman had already spun into the infield, and then he got collected by the 42. I wonder yeah. if we that's now three drivers have had the same crash at the same corner. Uh, or ride on board, see if that is indeed the case. So looking at the car just ahead, it's this not is... the same exact crash. He's sort of, I think, jammed on the brakes to sort of get out of it and then ended up being collected or locking up the rears and spinning around that way. Yeah, that's uh, somehow in avoidance Hello? of Bell spin, Bowman has gotten turned. I don't think he got hit. He lost it on his own. Rear let go. Yeah. Is that and coming... then he definitely got hit by John Hunter Nimitra. Yeah. That's coming from 24 degrees of banking down to 5 degree of banking, lifting off. The car just got unbalanced. Yeah, look, he's coming down from the low line to 5 degree, and then the 42 had nowhere to go and just smashed into him. That was a biggie. Yeah, that, that's, that's such a shame for JHN. He had absolutely nowhere to go, and these things do not stop on a dime. And that, that's just a terrible break for John Hunter Nemechek. Oh, gosh, who was going to spin and hit the pit wall, actually, if he had not hit Bowman and create a very dangerous crash. I don't know why they don't have a pit wall here. Two years ago, we saw Cody Ware go head-on into the pit wall uh, here at Texas. That was in 2022 why they haven't acted to that i do not know and we would have had a major pit road crash right there had bowman not been in nimichek's path it makes no sense to me it seems like a glaring issue something's destined to happen when you don't have a pit wall you've got a car a car potentially spinning across into pit lane they don't stop anyway now cars i mean god forbid there was a, a someone doing pit service and you know put two and two together it, it's not good yeah, that's been something that's been brought up multiple times here, and they refuse to do it. And I, my assumption is they refuse to do it because you have the quarter-mile short track on the infield of the front straightaway that they run bandoleros on every now and again, and they don't want to put that wall in there. See right there in the front of your screen, that little quarter-mile short track um, in the infield grass. That's the only reason I can imagine they don't want to do it. But. It doesn't have to be a permanent wall. No, it doesn't. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Pit lane as they head down. Rather come in now and just work, make a small adjustment. They'll do just that. 24, William Byron, Rudy Fugel asked him if he had any loose moments. He said, nope, I'm good. It's going to be right tires only. Regan. 12 car, Ryan Blaney likes the adjustments that they've been making. They've been gaining on the stability of the car, in particular on the exit. He's told that they are going to have to count on fuel, so he's going to have to wait on that. In the five car, Kyle Larson, his car is good. Yep. Quick. And Larson gets off pit road. Hamlin, Truex, Elliott, McDowell, and there's a problem for the 43 who's got a front issue problem with the tyres, and that's the reason for the caution there. Contact. Well, I just wanted to see what Ryan Blaney did on that pit stop because they said, you know, they said he lost seven positions. So I wonder 
Yeah, well, of course, he had not pitted, remember. He was off strategy. So Blaney's lost a number of positions on pit road here. So, rejigging the order. They are doing that now. I don't know who's got the lead. Todd Gilliland has the lead on the restart to Kyle Larson in second. Hamlin third, Trex fourth. And John Hunter goes into fifth position. Oh! Okay, friend of mine's had a fire right across here from her house. Oh. That is interesting, though. Yeah. Firefighters ride quickly. But wow, yeah. I don't know if I can hold that up, actually. No one's hurt, it looks like, but uh, yeah. Oh, dear. Hopefully you're all, oh, dear. Uh, Go on. Possibly appropriate time for me to run out and get a drink, if you don't mind. No Josh. worries. Run to yellow. It's run to yellow. Go for it. Yeah, well, that was sort of sort of my suggestion. So thank you very much. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be here all day. <laughs> Josh. Yeah, I'll change the three cam. Go on. My, look at my camera. I don't know if you saw this, but there's your note. A, a very <laughs> scuffed note with pathetic handwriting that was done quickly with a whiteboard marker. So you have actually made it go through just, to, just in case I wasn't paying attention. Oh, gosh. Oh, Matt White's upside... Uh, sorry, um, I've still left you... Uh, Matthew, you went upside down because I've still left you upside... Uh, the, that thing upside down since we had... Um, Matt White on in last time out, so... <laughs> is it, it'd be flip, won't it? Flip vertical. There, so we go. there we go. I've been upside down the whole time, my goodness. No, 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 no. Just when I just changed to the three cam, I've put his back... Oh, on oh very, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah. I was going to say, well, that, that's probably an interesting picture for everyone. No, it's been a, we have not been upside down. That's uh, good news. Interesting, says Charlotte. Hello. Hello to Craig. I can be upside down if you want me to. I can uh, go to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm already off to Donington uh, on Tuesday, so I've got I've got to take a train tomorrow to uh, d uh, to get to Donington. There's a further 30 minutes. Ah, the 48's going behind the wall. Are we surprised? That was a... Big truck hole. Yeah. yeah, that was. That was. Yes, it was. It was also a large hit for Bowman. That's such a shame. He had had that good run at Martinsville last what week. Finished seventh. Oh, what's Martins, happened? Oh, when well, did that happen? Remember, he was the stopper in the bottle on that last restart. So I wonder if uh, he had contact with someone that we did not see, uh, or contact with the wall. Yeah. And. Uh, Bowman went behind the wall because his uh, DVP hit eight minutes and eight seconds. Yeah, that'll do it. Bowman is out. Um, yeah. So just a reminder, as we have gotten one to go, and Todd Gilliland has stayed out, so he's going to be the leader here, which could create all manner of chaos on this restart. But just for those listening on USRN, well, and for those of you watching on YouTube, next week the NASCAR Cup Series is in Talladega. Then we'll be going up to the Dover Motor Speedway in Delaware on Sunday, April the 28th. And then the races in May will be in Kansas, Darlington, North Wilkesboro for All-Star Weekend and the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte. Hope you'll tune in for all the races on USRN and JB Motorsports on YouTube. Can't wait mm. as uh, we draw closer to our favorite month of the season as race fans. And that, of course, is the month of May. Uh Wish JB? us luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, indeed. Uh, JB, you want to take this restart? Thank you very much. We've been waiting to have a crack at this. It's been an interesting restart. Todd Gilliland's going to take us as well. Up to the Geico restart zone. Pace cars in. We are green flag running at Texas Motor Speedway as the green flag falls. Now, Larson's on the outside line. Let's see what he can do. Gilliland chops the inside line through one and two. We're four wide further back. Trex taking the low line. Hamlin taking up high. Two cars up. Bubba Wallace and the 54 Ty Gibbs get out of shuffled and get nearly close to the wall through one and two there, Matt. And they kept it through as we continue running back down the straight. Brilliant restart, Matthew. Yeah, you cannot get out of the groove in one and two. The uh, less banking in that end, you get out of the groove and you will go backwards. Wallace and Gibbs just found that out for sure. Larson to the line, leads off the restart. Truex and Hamlin in a fist fight behind him for second. Gilliland on the old tires, backsliding. Ross Chastain going by him. 
Really great as they come up to the wall. Hamlin almost getting put into it by Truex. Meantime, further back, everyone makes it through turn two cleanly. Here comes the inside, Michael McDowell uh, further back as well. He's on the high line now, trying to get past the 45 as well of Tyler Reddick. And Gilliland just dropping back from, the, well, he led the race, but down now on all tire, older tyres, I must point out, to fourth. Yeah, so Gilliland is going to be having everyone rushing at him from all different angles. He was able to hold off Chastain, and in fact, Chastain lost fifth position to Tyler Reddick. In behind the one, Michael McDowell and Ryan Blaney are door handle to door handle. Blaney on those fresher tires after coming in, losing that time on pit road, trying to make his way to the front. He gets by McDowell. William Byron tried to slide through. He could not. It is madness in the middle of the pack on this restart. Just take a look on board with Joey Logano as well as he comes through one and two. Just in 11th position, he's got Chase Elliott directly ahead of him in 10th. He'll try and close him down, but at the moment, they don't want to go for unnecessary maneuvers. They've got a long way to go in this stage. Another 56 laps, they've got to think about tyre saving, especially if we're starting to see random spin-outs that no one's actually having a problem with as well. As we see, the 14 now battling with the 22. Briscoe and Logano side by side. Logano again on the inside. He's going to go for that move regardless of what I say. He'll try and move up here to 11th position on the low line through two. Yeah, th these two Ford Mustangs with another and Ryan Priest following. Logano slides by Chase Briscoe further up. This battle between Ryan Blaney and Ross Chastain continues, but as I say that, it ends because Blaney shuts the door on Chastain. Blaney slides up to sixth. Chastain backslides to seventh. This is just in behind fifth place running Tyler Reddick, who still cannot dispatch of Todd Gilliland. Give credit to Gilliland here on this restart on the old tires, holding strong in fourth. Just watching Hamlin as well, who's third in Truex, and this is the battle we're looking at now as well, coming into turns three and four, because Truex just drifting slightly out of the corners as well. The two Toyotas going to try and run it together here to catch up to the Chevy of Larson. They want to let it go, but Hamlin isn't the type of driver. We've seen it this season. He's not the type to go, oh, OK, let's just play it safe and easy. No, he's going to play it. OK, let's go full throttle and just see what can happen. Yeah, he's not just going to sit in and log laps, is he? And he's right underneath the spoiler of that Bass Pro Shops Toyota. Truex will pin it down to the bottom of three and four. Hamlin will let it ride on the top side. Truex takes the air off the nose of Hamlin's Camry, however, on the exit of four. Truex will hold on to this second position. Oh. Hamlin in his slipstream will now dive back to the inside of turn one. That's, that's going to force Truex up high as well and out of position. Hamlin's going to go through Truex almost in the wall as he got a full course yellow again. What's up? Oh, two, set. That's the that's Carl Busch and the 77 of uh, Carl Hulsevar. Carl Hulsevar going round in turn two. And, well, I think that was Bush in avoidance. And I think that's just Hulsevar spinning around. Try to leave again. But I've, been, I've, I've only been back for 30 seconds. And you bring a caution. <laughs> Well, you, you, well, there we go. I'll go get another biscuit or something. <laughs> I forgot to bring... Oh, he got Why a look? shove. He did get a shove into one from Bush. Oh. Oh, Kyle. Well, Kyle has been struggling with this backup car, obviously, and I don't know if that just got away from him there or if Carson may have done something that drew the ire of Kyle Bush, but... Um, well held! <laughs> That was a drift and a half, I must say. Yeah, it was. Uh, as you can see, turns one and two is incredibly wide. It, it would be quite a racetrack if they could use all those lanes, but they can't. But if they could, you could run about seven or eight lanes in that uh, end of the racetrack. But you, you, can, uh, you can go for a long spin there at that end and not hit the wall. And that's exactly what Hosovar has done as he has come to pit road to change those four tires. We'll see if anyone else comes to pit road here. I don't think we're going to see many leaders hit pit road. I think track position is far too important. And to that point, pit light, uh, pit light is green. So pit road is open and no one is coming in. 50 to go in stage two of the, oh, take a deep breath. Auto Trader Eco Park Autom Automotive 400. <laughs> <laughs> Presented by. <laughs> <laughs>
That's almost as bad as the one we had a couple of years ago. What was it? The Formula One del Emilia Romagna made in it. Italy, sponsored by Heineken, Pirelli, Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, whatever it was. That was it's not one. as bad as I was literally just about to say. It's not as bad as looking at come out in Imola. The Formula One MSC Cruises Grand Premio del Made in Italy e della Magna Ro- Romagna 2024. <laughs> the hell are they doing that is the l- how the hell am i gonna fit that on the on the graphic at the top of our heads on the on the three screen in the pre-show how am i gonna fit that on there really tiny writing i'm glad to do we used to have a little box uh-huh. where the race name would be in before we changed the graphics this year that wouldn't have fit what on earth are they doing i'm just gonna type the uh- the Formula One Qatar Airways Azerbaijan Grand Prix, the Formula One Singapore Airlines Singapore Grand Prix, then into the Formula One Grand Premio de la Ciudad de Mexico, then the Formula One Lenovo Grandi Premio de Sao Paulo, 20 of oh my days. Qatar Airways. Uh, I mean, that's, that's, not that's not particularly long. That's just Spanish uh, or Portuguese. <laughs> so I apologize. Uh, Portuguese. Isn't it? Um, that's just Portuguese. There are some uh, there are some pretty long ones, but Imolo is the only one to go on three lines. The 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 one that I remember from NASCAR World, this was many years ago, the Bush series at Pikes Peak was the ITT Industries and Gold Pump oh, Salute wheel. To the wheel off, wheel off, wheel off, we're gonna wheel off. Oh. And that's under caution, so who's just come out of pit road? Dylan or Johnson? And had to uh well, I'm never in. Nemechek, you're gone. I'm no engineer, Josh, but I think that's supposed to be attached to one of the cars. Uh, <laughs> it's not very good at all. Oh, no. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I think that might have been off our leader, Kyle Larson. No, really? That's off, that's, off Kyle, that's off Kyle Larson. Yes. The leader, Larson. He's lost his right rear tire. He has. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. How on earth does that happen? Larson and Denny Hamlin takes the lead. He's, oh, it's the rear! Oh my word! Oh, and there's two. There's another one, isn't there? That's the no. second one. Or are we on a replay? No, no. Replay, replay. Yes. Okay. My mistake. Now, now this is a dramatic change in this race because he lost the wheel on the racetrack. This is a two-lap penalty for Kyle Larson, the dominant car of the day. Josh. We, yeah. Go on. Uh, can you go to battle screen for a minute, please? We can go battle screen. I'm... I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> it was flat, guys. It was flat. I just saw it. It was flat. So we had a flat tire that works itself off the rim. Because is the bolt still so, there? I think it is. So either, either they didn't get the lug nut tightly on on the last pit stop, that that's what it looked like to me. Yeah. We'll have to wait for confirmation. But like I said, this is a two lap penalty. Absolutely unbelievable. I, but I don't think they got the single lug tight on the last pit stop. At they, least yeah. that's what it looked like. They had a look at it. Now... Uh, Larry Mack might tell us right here, actually. That single lug nut that holds the wheel on the seventh generation with the retainer to okay well that was enthralling action as it comes through <laughs> apparently they can barely see you jt so either stand up or sit down but then when i sit down they can barely see me it's just yeah. the camera position we're going to the green i'll hand it back to you matthew as if we're in a uh, baton style of hand doing starts yeah but yeah, they're going to come to green here with Larson still on pit road to serve this two-lap penalty. This The complexion of this race just totally changed. Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr. on the front row. Green flag back in the air, and we're racing again. Middle portions of stage two. Two by two, and ducking down to the inside. Three wide goes Chase Elliott. Muscles his way underneath. Michael McDowell gets the elbows out. Elliott will pick up a couple of places on this restart. The battle for the lead is still on, streaming into turn three. Hamlin and Truex, a pair of teammates. Yeah, Hamlin can get it early uh, and build a gap. Sorry, Josh, if he can get it early and build a gap, 
there's a good chance here that he can control the rest of the stage. Sorry, Josh. Look at Chastain weaving between the traffic as well further back. There's Larson's two lap penalty, so he'll be praying for future yellows to get back in and get back on the free pass, but he's going to make himself get up there to get the free pass as Hamlin leads this race, Truex in second, and they're all running a bit too close together for my liking as well further back. They're still too wide coming into three and four as they go down. And that's Gilliland we're watching. So one with Reddick looking back through three. And then there's Chastain in P5 as well as they come across the control line. Lap 122. So Hamlin away with the lead. Truex is second. Reddick is third. Oh, and Larson now two laps down. Spin and we up. have a yellow and a car around. It's Josh Berry. In the middle of turns one and two, he slides up and backs in to the turn two wall. Josh Berry crashes and comes to a grinding halt and that's a break there for kyle larson that's a big break for kyle he'll be able to take the wave around and get a lap back as the caution quickly comes back out as josh barry went for a long lazy looping slide in turns one and two and was unable to keep it off the wall like carson hosevar did just a few moments ago let's see how oh. barry went around oh he got cut down by ricky stenhouse jr yeah, and round he goes. Message sent to grid network. <laughs> I mean, well. look how long that spin was. My gosh. It's been very bitty, this race, actually, or this second yeah. stage, really. Uh, it's the old saying, cautions breed cautions, and I think everyone just racing that little bit more intensely now, maybe, now that that pit stop strategy is starting to unfold. People almost know more where they are and more what they need to do. And that's just causing these extra portions because people are just getting over a little bit more than they perhaps should be. And again, there, that was pretty innocuous. Number four just turned into the corner. Didn't quite have the grip that he expected and found himself going round. Well, and I also think there may have been a little bit of contact with Stenhouse. When Stenhouse came down, I think the uh, left rear of yeah. Stenhouse caught the nose of Barry. And that yeah, might possibly have as well. helped that uh, process. But that's a tough break for Josh Barry, who's had a good last couple of weeks on these short tracks. He deserved a much better finish than he had last week at Martinsville. Um, he loves the short tracks. Uh, but here on a bigger track like Texas, he's found an issue. Now, I think he is going to be able to continue but we'll see how much that damage to the rear end uh, hampers the number four. Again, we'll, uh, I'm sure JT can confirm this for us when it happens. Larson would not be the free pass because he was two laps down, but he will be able to take the wave around if he chooses, which of course he would, to go from two laps down to one. Uh, just refreshing, Bob. Uh, nothing yet. Uh, Cliff Daniels, this is from Jeff Clark. Uh, Cliff Daniels calls it super odd the wheel came off at that point, but says once we get our lap stack back, we'll be right back in it. Sorry that well, happened. Well, it, it thing, is. Yeah, it, all good. I'd rather it happen under yellow. Uh, it is very strange for that to happen then because they ran a handful of laps under green, then the caution came out, and then the tire came off. Now, you would think, theoretically, with a single lug wheel... If, it, if the lug nut wasn't tight, it would come off straight away, but it didn't. So that is very strange that it took a handful of laps under green and yellow to wind itself loose. That is... Uh, that's, that's very strange. Uh, Casgrala has done the uh, wave around. I think we're going to see Carl Larson do the same here. Uh, Austin Hill was behind the wall, by the way, for a steering issue. <laughs> I think, well, I think if you his, have three wheels, you tend to have a steering issue. I, I, I think his, I think his steering issue was they didn't put fresh tires on that car. And that, <laughs> I think that was their issue. But anyway, um, well, that, that like I said, complexion of the race has totally changed, guys. And um, wow, that's unbelievable. I will be back in two seconds. No worries. As they continue to rise and the race continues to go on here. Hamlin from Truex, Reddick, Gilliland, Chastain is the top five. Then it's Blaney, Elliott, McDowell, Byron, Briscoe, the top ten. Logano, Steinhardt Jr., Priest, uh, Gregson, Jones, Sindrick, Smith, Lejour, Keslowski, and Suarez uh, takes us to 20. Gibbs, Bush, Haley, Busher. 
Hunter Nemechek, Bubba Wallace, down to 26th now after getting pushed out wide early on. Henrik, Hosevar, Dylan, uh, Burton, Johnson, back on the lead lap. Austin Dillon in 32nd. Berry, uh, Bell, Grala, Larson now 36, still yet to get the wave around properly, but we didn't see him taken, so maybe he's got one more. Bowman is out of the race, and Austin Dillon is behind the wall. Now I'm looking at it. Uh, the 33 is still behind the wall, by the way, of Austin Hill, but we didn't. Uh, it didn't happen that long yeah. before we had the caution for the 48 of Alex Bowman only two laps before, so not that bad there. Just waiting for the timing screens to refresh and see mm. how many laps back Larson is. This is uh, an interesting race now, actually, as we approach what will be half distance uh, about the end of this stage uh, to get into yep. it. And then we'll see. Well, it's 41 to go. And then we'll see exactly. We'll be about 10 laps halfway. Uh, halfway will be back stretch of 133. Yeah. Glad I worked that out. So 133.5. So that will be the half distance in this race. At that time. If uh, we have to red flag for whatever reason, it will be declared a result. The 20 is in down pit lane of Christopher Bell and is having some tape done to him on the rear of the car we've just seen on the stats as the field continues to close down. Do you know, I'm so looking forward to my bed at the end of this day as well. It's been a super long one again and it's because it's been random times because you get up early, then you wait around for most of the day. Do it, then you've got three races in a row. So you're like you're tired, then you're really tired. We're coming back to the green though, and uh, that's going to catch us all by surprise. And I notice as well that Matthew is not with us in the comms box. We are still on USRM, so I'll be ready there as uh, we get ready. Two by two, Hamlin and Truex. They've chosen Hamlin down low, Truex up high. The pace car will peel off, and with 40 to go, we will restart stage two here at the Texas Motor Speedway. The fans are on their feet. We're into the Geico restart zone, and we are green again at Texas. And it's a good start from Hamlin. He'll go down low. Truex keeps up that high line. They're still very much packed together. Gilliland v. Reddick through one. And I think Truex might have an advantage here with the out drag if he can keep it towards the wall. He's got a good exit out of two, and he's still going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hamlin. All clear further back as they come into three and four, and JT, they've still got the action from Hamlin and Truex out there. Yep, Hamlin gets a car length at least, a length, and that is increasing as Chastain side by side with the 45 of Reddick down into one. Good restart there, Tom. They've all kept it clean and Chastain looks a bit feisty. Oh. He's going to come up and early block oh, for 45. Wow, Longbow. That was so close. Perilously close between the number one and Gillilam in the number 38. That was unbelievable. I thought maybe there's going to be a bit of contact. Now 24 has a look to the inside trying to figure out who this is. I think it was Chase Elliott. Couldn't quite find a way through there either. It's still on the outside. We've got the uh, black and green number uh, 45 gets through and up into a position. So that's uh, Reddick getting through into what I believe actually is seventh position. So he gets himself ahead of Chase Elliott, your top five as it runs. Uh, Hamlin, Truex Jr., Chastain, Gilliland and McDowell. Having a look at it, there was no pass around, so Larson's still two laps down. Yeah, same for Kaz Grala. They just swapped places, so weird that NASCAR chose not to do that, maybe because they were both serving penalties. They didn't seem it fit, as we see Reddick round the outside of Elliott into one and two. That's going to be Elliott going down low. Reddick has the pace, though, up high. Two different manufacturer of cars now side by side. Of course, Elliott in the Chevy, Reddick in the Toyota. And it's going to be very close, but the Toyota might out drag him into turn three. Elliot keeps it down low there as we get uh, Matthew back with us up here in the comms box. I tell you what, Matthew, it's a good restart. And now we're seeing these two side by side. Reddick really is out dragging that, and he's going to go wheel to wheel, oh. and there's contact again. Uh, he might have been in the wall there, Reddick, too, right at the line. Elliot, he has sharpened the elbows here these last couple of restarts, and uh, he's. He's not patient anymore, Chase Elliott. And did 
I thought we were going to get a replay of that, but Elliott's, this winless drought is closing in on 50 races without a win. Chase Elliott is losing patience. He is going for it. Here we are. Did did he squeeze Reddick into the wall here? If yes. not, it's awfully close. That was contact. Yeah, it went in the wall. 100% went in the wall. That's got to be looked at by the stewards. Gotcha. Chase this Elliott, is NASCAR, is, Josh. Uh... <laughs> what, sorry? This is NASCAR. Yeah? The <laughs> stewards don't care about that. All right, all right. In that case, look, get, get, get him in the reading field and get them punching at the end of the race. He hadn't had a punch That's up this year. I can't make it well, really Then frustrating. again, Tom, you say that. There were, was a uh, last uh, week at the truck series. There was a couple of drivers called to the uh, race control hall at the end of the race. Oh! Well, that's not the uh, that's not the NASCAR I know. Although a race control hauler sounds quite funny. <laughs> that's quite NASCAR. We have a two race suspension has been announced by the stewards, so they do penalise you as Chastain. Makes a move in the tribal, tries to go down low on Truex. He's got the run through two. Truex again goes up high. Chastain down low, takes second place with absolute ease against Martin Truex. So uh, it's a two race suspension to two crew members. Likely tire change at the Jackman, not the crew chief. Uh, that's what happened because they were operating on pit road, not in the safe zone. Uh, we saw a while ago in the car. Can't tell who's the, who that was actually. Uh, that would have been Kyle Larson. Uh, it, it's uh, the penalty yes, for losing a tire on the track is a two lap penalty in the race and then two pit crew members of NASCAR's judgment will be suspended for two races. Yeah, Cliff Daniels, who's his crew chief, won't be a part of that. He, he should be fine. They shouldn't, well, they, they won't suspend him, will they? They'll be the Jackman and the Lugnut. Yeah, they, they used to suspend the crew chief for two weeks for that. Then they kind of went back on that thinking that was too heavy of a penalty for a crew chief that had nothing to do with the pit stop itself uh, as we have a battle for fourth these front row cars who have been up a lot this year McDowell passing Gilliland to take over fourth so FRM has a uh, double top five going right now Ryan Blaney and Chase Elliott in behind the 34 and 38 but what a tremendous run being shown right now by Michael McDowell and Todd Gilliland. Of course, you guys might remember, you might have seen the clip. This is, of course, the racetrack that Michael McDowell had the most terrible tumble at in 2008 in qualifying here when his car hooked head on into the turn one wall, flipped and tumbled down the banking multiple times. Of course, NASCAR shared that on their social media feed earlier this week. Yeah. And Sam Mayer, uh, Xfinity Series driver, had a funny quote tweet to that is, why would you show us that right before we go out and qualify? <laughs> <laughs> well, Fox are going to an ad break, and I'd hate to say it, uh, but uh, guess what has just been deployed on the racetrack? Hey! <laughs> and it's for... Berry again. Oh, what's he done this time? Yellow's out, and Berry has done something just as they go to break. Oh, oh and the front tire's oh, completely gosh. gone. He's hit yeah, the wall. That, uh, uh, the, the right front or the right rear has uh, gone down on that car, and he has hit the wall a ton with the right side. That's a heavy hit. Well, the first hit didn't take him out of the race, but the second one certainly will that's a heavy hit for josh barry and the hendersonville tennessee driver will be done for the day barry is done um, for the day he's out officially that is a heavy hit oh my gosh what also is a heavy hit is the replay of the mcdowell 2008 crash that i've just seen that was mm. massive mm. Oof. here's a replay of barry Coming, is it going to come on? Here we go. Oh, backwards. Oh, that's a nasty one. Oh, and he's going to hit the wall twice. Oh, no. Backwards into the wall. Rhea connects first and sort of spits him into the wall. So he gets a back hit, a side hit, and it goes down low. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a bit knocked up in there. I hope he's all right. But he's behind the wall and out, and he's done for the day. Get it out. Park it. The 48's there, too. Yeah, early shower, as they say, in uh, mm. football for him. Uh, 
yeah, that's that's frustrating. And again, the sort of bitterness of this second stage continuing on here. Uh, Josh, that's our yeah. third caution now, I count, uh, inside of this second stage. Yeah, you are correct, yes. Right. Yeah, which isn't, uh, well, four if you count the, the, the initial cautions to start the stage, but we won't. Uh, interesting what people do here, because we're not far away from the next stage starting. Looks like we've got quite a few pit group ready to uh, get going and uh, get them uh, receive their drivers. I wonder who chooses to come in. If you're Denny Hamlin right now, I wonder if you choose to come in. Oh, he does, apparently. Yeah. Oh, he does. Wow, that only two, well, three cars stayed out. Now that's interesting to me. They're going to have to on top of the box saying, all right, let's 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 bring it down. Denny says he's fine. Doesn't really need any adjustments, Regan. The 12th car, Ryan Blaney decides to pit right here. Couldn't really tell his crew chief, Jonathan Hassler, what to do with the car because of the old tires and dirty air that it was in. So what they do within that run, so they're just going to do four tires. Yep, and a lot of top of the fuel now for Blaney as well. As you do, I need to step out for just a second, so I'll hand back over uh, to Matthew as well. As we are 26 to go, let's see if we get the end of stage two without a yellow. Yeah, they've had that rash of yellow fever here, uh, as Tom has mentioned, and we did see about three or four cars stay out. So you're going to have Ross Chastain, Michael McDowell, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. at the front of the grid here for this restart. And we'll see. Now, I thought Ross Chastain came on really strong at the end of that stage, Tom. Uh, and I, I think Ross... I think that one car is going to be a contender all the way to the end here. Yeah, I think so. He's had a bit of a quiet race, hasn't he, um, Ross Chastain? But he's he's stayed in there for pretty much the entire time. And now in the lead of this race, uh, trying to see what the pit stops are. He's made four stops. Uh, majority of other people also sitting on four. So I wonder if Ross Chastain is thinking here, I can get to the end of the stage, 26 laps to go in the stage. And yeah. then pit then, because presumably everyone else is also going to pit at the end of the stage. Because what the the, down, the benefit of not doing that, or the downside of not doing that, is that you then only have about 10 laps after the stage and you're pitting under green anyway. Yeah. Chastain and McDowell and these guys that did stay out, they should be able to make it the rest of the way on the stage. They, they, they don't have to worry about fuel. What they will be a little bit more worried about will be do they drop back on these old tires or does the trap position hold up for them here um mentioned a football reference earlier tom um i'm, I'm not happy today oh i'm not I've had happy a great day. uh yeah i know you uh, you had a wonderful day i i'm not happy because they have gifted the title back to City. They have gifted them the title. What My dad are we is doing? over the moon. <laughs> As a uh, Crystal Palace fan, my dad's over the moon. Well, well, in that case, you two have had a great day between Palace and Villa. Well, getting no, those big I've wins. had a terrible day because my dad's a Crystal Palace supporter. I'm a Brighton supporter. Oh, oh. well, I. Ah. <laughs> I was at work, so I was nervously checking the score. Um, not that I was on my phone at work, but I was nervously checking the score. No, 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 no. Um, nervously checking the score, uh, and then got in the car, saw that it was 2 and I was like, that, that's fantastic, isn't it? Um, I, Champions, I just... Champions League, it's crazy to me that I'm going to probably get to see my team in the Champions League. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, th th that is terrific. And uh, we'll have to have you on USRN for some Villa champions league matches just i'll be there league. unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is true i didn't think about that but it, terrific for villa just very much hate that they've gifted this title to city arsenal and liverpool unbelievable oh. hate to be this guy but i'm gonna be this guy fox have just shown the exact same thing for the second time while going to an ad break oh they have <laughs> i mean they have i think what I think what they might be getting at here is that many years ago here at Texas, there was a guy parachuting in from the sky, and he had a difficult landing, and he ran into the side of Kevin Harvick's car and damaged Kevin Harvick's car. Speaking speaking of parachute blunders, Matthew, and on the topic of football, have you ever heard of the Villa Park parachute blunder? 
Oh, yes. What? Someone dressed as Santa. Oh, yes. Someone dressed as, there is footage of this on YouTube, if you're not aware. Someone dressed as Santa uh, tried to parachute into Villa Park at halftime during a game. We're about to go back to three. I'll, I'll finish my point in a moment. And he basically uh, hit the hit the, uh, hit the the roof and broke his back. Oh, God. So, right, just save it for about another 30 seconds when we go back to caution again. Anyway, your turn, Matthew. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully we can go green here to the end of the stage. It'll be 23 laps to the end of stage two. Ross Chastain and Michael McDowell on some old shoes take the green flag, and we're back underway. Nose to nose, Chastain and McDowell on the front row. Everyone stays tidy in line two by two. Will they three spread wide. out and go three wide in turn one? Yes, they will. As one car went up the racetrack, Chastain and McDowell stay door handle to door handle. Down the back straightaway into turn three. No one giving an inch and no Four one wide. asking for an inch as this battle for the Contact! lead rages oh. on spins. McDowell breaks loose, spins, and oh. slaps the outside wall hard on the exit of turn four while racing for the lead. Michael McDowell has trashed it. Well, oh, I, how unfortunate for I, Michael McDowell. I said, it, is out. I said it as a joke. Wait 30 seconds to the next one. 31.5 seconds later, we have a second caution in a row. And that is done. Rear left suspension broken. Michael McDowell okay. But that car is D-O-D-N-D. -D. Done. D-O-N-E. Hang on. D-O-N-E. Done. Yeah. Ah, yeah, so smart. I've just seen the car as well. Quite importantly, I... I don't know if you guys spotted it. I, I saw, I oh, forget which car it is, the number. Is it the number nine, the black and orange one? Had to go through Chase pit lane, had to dive into pit lane. Now, question for uh, for you guys. When he's in, if he's had to speed through pit lane in avoidance of an accident, is that still a penalty ah, for speed? Elliot, so Smith, Dylan and, Hall and Haley. It's not a penalty as long as, once you avoid the crash, you then begin to decrease your speed. Yeah, you were right. That was Dylan, uh, Zane Smith, Chase Elliott, as you said, and Justin Hay all dived down pit road. So Chastain, lightest of touches, and Michael McDowell goes round backwards into the wall. And basically, his rear left tire and his front left tire uh, aren't doing eye to eye anymore. Jess says, Josh, you you jinxed it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I did say wait 30 seconds. 31 point, 31 point five seconds later, <laughs> the caution comes out. In fact, I think it was actually 30 oh. seconds exactly. So, yeah, not bad. Sorry. That is such a shame for Michael McDowell. Hello, Joe in the comment section. Glad to see you with us here. And there's another uh, Simpsons and as reference. You mentioned Jess here. Uh, <laughs> SMRT or SMART. <laughs> I've got one word for you. <laughs> Welp. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, to be fair, I won't give it. I don't know if I, I'm not going to give it away, but all I'm going to say is that I was watching an episode of The Simpsons last night to fall to sleep because I thought, I'm not going to stick YouTube on. I don't really fancy watching Family Guy. So I chose The Simpsons and I chose the episode where they go to the Movementarians and they have all that, um, the leader, and they're trying to get to Homer and they're going, na 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 leader, na 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 leader. And I thought, that doesn't work. And then I thought to myself, how many times over the years have I been going, no, 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 leader? It does work. It's an annoying, catchy tune. And the problem is, as well, um, I was thinking of that at the end of MotoGP because of who won the race. And I said, no, 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 no. So it works. It's powerful advertising. Tangent there, isn't it? But we're in the yellow. What was your tangent, <laughs> Dylan? Come on, Austin. Come on, Tom, Dylan. Yeah, what was it? I got, I, well, I sort of got to the end of it, so yeah, they, they wanted to Santa to parachute in and, and go onto the pitch. Uh, he got caught in, I think, a good light, didn't he? Uh, I've heard just the, seen it out. Fell from the top tier. I said the Ooh. top tier, so two tiers. Fell from, fell from the roof, unfortunately, on his back onto the pitch. I believe the bloke was relatively okay. Um, by relatively okay, I mean for a crash that bad he survived, but <laughs> yeah, I, I think definitely hurt quite significantly out, out of interest did you say he hit a um one of the spotlights i believe it was a floodlight yeah he no, hit the floodlight to rewatch it so he didn't have oh, rudolph boy. then oh. oh boy oh man <laughs> oh my god the poor kids christmas christmas eve and throwing <sighs> santa crash or a boxing day game <laughs> 
Um, so I, I, I want to ask you, since we are under caution, and Joe Joe leaves the comment in the chat section as well, Josh, you did the race. I, I was able to start the race uh, MotoGP at Coda. Ah. It was because, of course, it was in America. It got upgraded from True TV to TBS on oh. television here in America. Um, so I got, to, I got to watch the start. I've got the rest on DVR to catch up with, but thoughts on the MotoGP race is uh, what Joe asks. I won't, I, I won't say any, the results, but what I will say was MotoGP's just been brought by Liberty Media, and they're looking mm-hmm. way to promote the sport, especially in America and around the world, to get more eyes on it. If you ever wanted a race to show them what MotoGP was, what MotoGP is now, and what MotoGP will be in the future, it is that race. We had stars from the past, stars from the present, and stars of the future all at the front battling. It was one of the greatest races, uh, certainly at Coach I've ever seen, and certainly in MotoGP, in uh, nearly over, what, nearly 200 I've commentated on now for MotoGP, and I've watched many or more. Um, that was up there with one of the best races in a long, long time. It was spectacular. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Go watch our watch-along coverage as commentary alongside it because me and Megan were going nuts. I think I hit, at one point, not kidding, about 100 decibels in the commentary box of my voice. And I think that's how loud I was because it was just so dramatic. Uh, I think I'll tell you, actually, in a second because I've, I've got it on my phone. But uh, it was so good. Well, I, I just want to make mention, and I know, Josh, we've, we've talked the last year or so because I, I wanted to get into MotoGP, but here stateside, there was no outlet to watch. There was nothing really to keep count of, keep track of in any way. So this new deal, uh, putting it on True TV and today TBS here in America, I've watched all the races this year. I've DVR'd them all. I've either watched them live or caught up with them after the fact. I love it. I love it. Um, oh, no. I, I, I've really quite enjoyed mm. finally being able to get into MotoGP. Just no. seeing who waved the checkered flag for Texas at, Mo- <laughs> at MotoGP. <laughs> yeah. Certain guy who is blue, runs very fast, and likes to collect some gold rings. Who, who, who was it? Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, oh, that, wow, that's quite bizarre. We got, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, he's still running. We've got Carl Larson in the bits and uh, back out onto the track. So uh, that's that's good to see. Lap 148 of 267. This second stage has really dragged, hasn't it, Jess? Sorry, it's my fault because I've just... Oh, yeah, I've that, jumped. Uh, that first stage blew by. We didn't have... We what, only had one yellow with that first stage, and oh boy, the second stage has been... Wow. NASCAR hates me. It hates me. It really does. I've done this now for 11 weeks, and it ha- no, 12 weeks, and it hates me. It's round nine, but we had the, the, the duels one week. That takes us to 10. Then we had the, the, the clash, which takes us to 12. Having round nine in April is crazy, by the way. Yes. And you know what's crazy? Welcome to you, NASCAR. You, you, you know what's crazy, and I, I do hate to go on a tangent on my own. Oh, here we go. I know where this is going. It is April the 14th, and we have only had one real IndyCar race. Oh, right. Okay, that's what, not where, where it was we, going. What are we doing? Oh, my God. Thank God Long Beach is next week, yeah. because the Thermal Club was a, a J-O-K-E joke. Um, to continue to spell out our words. We're going to be covering a spelling bee before long. Um, but we are in mid-April. We have run one real IndyCar race. I- I'm very annoyed by a lot of things in IndyCar land. My gosh. It's confused the hell out of me because I didn't I didn't do much of St. Pete. So for me, I've had the open tests... The thermal club, which wasn't great, and then we had the open day test, which got rained out. I am totally turned around of IndyCar this year. Anyway, <laughs> is that some popcorn? I know yesterday we had some frozen custard. That looked quite nice. I wanted to have a go, actually. <laughs> Andy's frozen custard. Did y'all see the finish of that race? My God. Ah, I want that today, if we ever get there. Right. No kidding. <laughs> Tag tail, my turn. 
don't worry, Matthew. You can have another one in around about uh, 30 seconds. Into the Geico restart zone. Green again for the eighth time today. And Chastain now hits the front. He's on the low line. Steinhaus Jr. is up high. Coming through is Jones. And then Bubba Wallace has got lucky. He's up to fourth. We're four wide through one. And this time, everyone is starting to behave themselves. They know they just need to get to the end of this one more and will probably end this stage under caution. 22 of Logano coming back into as we hit three and four there, Matthew. And again, it looks like we've got Chastain out front by 1.2 seconds to Eric Jones. What were we just talking about a few minutes ago, Tom? Ross Chastain, I think, has a good piece underneath him, and look how he has jetted away from everyone on this restart. My goodness. It, it's crazy. He's barely in picture. He's that far ahead, and it helps that the two behind him are battling Steinhouse Jr. on the outside line. Jones on the inside line. Steinhouse gets a little bit of a better run, though. Stays around the outside, and I think might just have the momentum. Jones is back at him on the inside line. It's a long, long move for Steinhaus Jr. And I don't think he's going to Stenhaus. I don't know why I put an iron in there, but he's not quite able to get there. Jones, in the end, on that inside line, is able to hold on to it. Whoa, did you guys yeah. see Daryl Wallace Jr. put those left side tires in the grass? My gosh. He was... I thought he was going to go around. The way that car twitched when he came back onto the uh, tarmac, I don't know, but that's Hosevar getting dropped down. Keslowski is coming back up. That strategy from Keslowski of not fighting early on, it's paid off. He's up into fifth place now behind uh, Bubba Wallace. He did restart stage two in 25th place. Brad Keslowski, the silent assassin, is closing up. Maybe he should be number 47, not Steinhaus. I mean, he'll be a better hitman the way he's carved his way through the field without anybody noticing him. Oh, I mean, his, whoa, contact on the back straightaway. Ty Gibbs and Ryan Blaney trade a little paint. Uh, you mentioned Keslowski. His winless drought is now north of 100 races. This is a former series champion. It's gone over 100 races without a win. A lot of people would really love to see that six car back in victory lane. Of course, at a place in Texas where the uh, Roush team has had so much success in the past including with the six-car of Mark Martin the second time we ran here in 1998. But Keselowski still locked in this battle with Stenhouse for the fourth position. Coming to the end of the stage as well, so they've got to start moving. They've got to start having better runs. I'm surprised Fox haven't been using in 8 Texas as their closer this weekend as well. The current number one across the world, as we see, the number one leading this race of Ross Chastain. That is Kyle Larson, however, down in 33rd place. He will get the pass around and the free pass next time. So he will be back on the lead lap shortly. For the start yeah, he got the free pass. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, he, he got the free pass under that last caution to get to one lap down. So if he can stay the first car a lap down here, which he should, he'll get the next free pass with 10 to go, and we'll have Larson back on the lead lap. Here's Carson, Hosevar, Harrison, Burton, and Ryan Blaney battling for 6th, 7th, and 8th. Now that's Hosevar and Burton on a bit of an off strategy here to get this track position, but Blaney, he is one of the best cars here trying to pick his way through this traffic, but at the front, it is Ross Chastain who won the season finale at Phoenix last year, has not won since. Been rather quiet to start this year, but I, I Tom and I were talking about it a couple cautions ago. I think he's just quietly got one of the best cars here. We'll see if he can hold his spot at the front. Let's pick up Denny Hamlin back here, Josh. Uh, he's running with goodness knows how many drivers. He's got Noah Gregson, Tyler Reddick, and Chase Elliott all around him. Yeah, this is down in 13th place. He's really losing a lot of time here as well. And look at that, he chucks the down on the inside line as uh, we see Gibbs in uh, just ahead. He's going down to the outside, so he's trying to regain a position here from Hamlin. He does so with some ease as well. Gibbs up to 10th. Hamlin now down, and Hamlin's backed off massively, so he was going, and now he's dropped. That's what happens when you get the toe cut off you like that. As McDowell is officially out, and he's been evaluated in the medical center and released, he is okay. That's good to hear, as uh, Chase Elliott ducks out of line, breaks out of the pocket at the end of the back straightaway, gets to the left elbow of Ty Gibbs. Gibbs keeps his Bubba. foot in it round the outside. It's a really terrific battle, but heaven forbid if we see it. Let's pick up <laughs> Daryl Wallace Jr. going after Eric Jones for second there in turn two. And he's through with ease. I don't think Jones has got the tires to have a gumption here. 
three pit stops, remember, but look at Wallace, started 10th, ended stage one, 10th, now he's P2, and he's only eight tenths behind Chastain as well, with seven to go. Uh, 30 seconds a lap, he's only a mathematician to work that one out. We should be quite interesting. We've passed half distance, so it's going to be a real challenge. This the final stage to see how quick we can push. Tell you what, Abu Dhabi Sports were wrong. <laughs> the stage two has taken a lot longer. It's taken one hour and three minutes to complete stage two. A long time to run an 80 lap stage, or what was it? 85, I think it was. Yeah, but 80 and, uh, this final stage, yeah, final stage goes 102. <laughs> Hopefully we can turn to more green flag laps in this final stage. Coming to start, five laps to go, and you are right, Josh. Daryl Wallace Jr. is starting to make gains on Ross Chastain. Now, does he have enough time to steal the stage win away from him is the question. Meanwhile, there is a gaggle of cars, six of them in turn two. Gibbs, Elliott, Hamlin, Hosovar, Reddick, William Byron is there. So, too, is Noah Gregson. And once again, we can't stay on it long enough to tell you what's Ooh. happening. But just a moment ago, boy, Chase Elliott sliced and diced his way to the inside of Ty Gibbs, and Denny Hamlin nearly ran in to the back of Elliott. Yeah, got lost out big time there further back. Not long to go in this one, in this stage, four uh, at the line. And there we see... Once again, the 12 making a move through on the inside line. So Blaney having a go at Keselowski over fourth position. They're towing in Eric Jones. Jones is sinking like a stone here. Brad Keselowski's about to hit another one. He might get third place here. And some crucial stage points. Blaney's going to leave him a little bit of a love tap as they come through. Three to go in stage two. And they want to win this one under green. They, they want to get there peacefully. They don't want a caution to take us to the end of stage two. We don't want one either. No, <laughs> too many. Seven already. <laughs> Jones holding on to that third spot on Blaney uh, and Keselowski. Wallace continues to creep closer and closer to Ross Chastain, I may add. Two to go in the stage. Chastain is going for his 12th career stage victory. Daryl Wallace Jr. doesn't quite have that many. Be a rare stage win for Wallace if he could claim it here. Three tenths behind, and he's closing in. That's Larson uh, on the back of Dylan, I want to say. It's out trying to get back position. Yeah, yeah, it is. Hi, Dylan, yeah. So that's it. That's to get back on the lead lap and secure himself in as uh, the next one around, and he's going to do that. So by passing Dylan now, he's secured himself as getting into the next one. But we're coming to the end, and <laughs> look at that. That's Hamlin battling with the 45 of Tyler. That's the final 45 Tyler Reddick coming on the inside line. But Ross Chastain is going to hold it. Meantime, Keselowski battling with Briscoe has got the inside line. The picture doesn't want to show it, but we're coming to the end of stage two. Two and a half tenths between Chastain and Wallace. Who takes the green jacket? Chastain takes it across the line. And out comes that caution. Stage two ends. Chastain, Wallace, Blaney, Jones, Briscoe, the top five. And the points positions. Ross Chastain gets stage two here at Texas Motor Speedway for the Auto Trader Eco Park Automotive 400. <gasps> Little little opinion uh, about stages, uh, if I may. Yeah. I think if there is if there is a caution uh, within ten laps of a stage checkered, we should stay green through the checkered. Uh, we should stay green through the stage. That's my opinion. Um, so, okay, they... you're not the first person to bring this up. Here, here's where I'm at on the stage racing. I'm not. I'm not usually the first person to bring many things up. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's the thing on the stage racing, and I know you either love it or you hate it. But I guess where I'm at on the stage racing is when they introduced this, and this is homo. We're we're going almost ten years ago now. Uh, we're close to a decade since stage racing was introduced. They did this because the TV networks went to NASCAR and said, hey, if we know when the cautions are going to come out, we can plan our brakes accordingly, and we wouldn't have to have as many brakes under green flag racing. Liars. To which that I say, <laughs> well, that's gone down the toilet very quickly now, hasn't it? 
I wish because we still get a lot of ad breaks under green flag racing. And then, of course, we get them under the stage yellows as well. I mean, me and Matthew... Yeah, but surely it's not a problem to then just run the ad break on that last caution. Because you've got a caution. That's the point yeah. of what I'm trying to say. You've got a caution anyway. So just run the ad break there. Then you've got... Uh, then you just go green through the... Because what's going to happen now is we've got another 10 minutes of yeah. <laughs> picking up nothing. Uh, you know... Having a delay because we decided that we wanted to go yellow, uh, because we need to go yellow. We get this. Now, go on, JT. I've just done a search, but I don't know if it's correct or not. I'll leave it to you, Matthew. They're saying stage racing was introduced in 2017. I thought it was earlier than that. It was way earlier. So, yeah, than 17, that. 17 sounds about right because ah, it okay. was the first year. Uh, of the Monster Energy when it went from Sprint yes. Cup to Monster Energy. Um, so yeah, 17 sounds about right. So we're getting close to 10 years, which just makes yeah. me feel old. I'm going to say uh. it. I didn't like the Sprint sponsorship. It confused everything because you had the... <laughs> it, because it was literally... It was the Sprint Series. That's what it was called, the NASCAR Sprint Series. So it confused everything because you think... Oh, you think motor racing, you think sprint. You think, oh, it's it's not the actual one. So I much like it now that it's called the Cup Series. Yeah. Um, well, of course, Winston. I like that. Winston one. was the title sponsor for so many years. Yeah. Uh, and then we went from Nextel, and that only lasted for what was it, three years before it, or four years before it became the Sprint Cup Series. Then we went from Sprint to Monster Energy, and now it's just. Oh, and then and then we also wanted to change it. It wasn't the Monster Energy Cup Series. Mm. It was the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. Yeah. So we wanted to change the vernacular on it. Now that it's just the Cup Series, it just helps a lot. Oh gosh, does it help a lot? It does, especially. I still with... love how. I'm oh, sorry, Josh. I still love how um, making everyone turn in their grave because I prefer to the Cup Series as NASCAR, knowing full well the distinction <laughs> between them all. But all right. I just find it easier. Ding. His Don't forget me. Is tight in three and four. Help him with that. A little air pressure adjustment and four tires here, Regan. 43 of Eric Jones trying to figure out how to call the race right to be in the right position at the end of it when it's all done. Right now, a little bit too loose in turns one and two. They're going to tighten up for that. And the 12 of Ryan Blaney needs help turning into three, and he's tight on the exit everywhere, just like he has been all day. Who's going to win the race off pit road? That's the question. It's going to be Ross Chastain. No, Blaney. Blaney wins it with Chastain Keselowski. One, two, three off the road. JT. Uh, the, yeah, when uh, when it's just NASCAR, and we asked a question, are you talking about the NASCAR Cup Series, the NASCAR Xfinity Series, the Truck <laughs> Series, the Brazil Series, the Canada Series, the Mexican Series, or the Wheel and Euro Series? That's right. There's so oh. many. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. I want to say it's an eSports Series with the Euro Cup Series champion in it. Oh, don't you still? Yeah. Oh. Mr... Alon Day, fantastic yeah. driver. Oh, Alon uh, Day. I remember Alon Day, my goodness. He was, yes. I I him. He was a fa he's a fantastic driver. Yep. Oh, um, Alon Day, he, he came onto the scene in the Xfinity series. He ran a handful of road course races, and uh, he, he had talent. He just needed funding with his team, with his uh, car. But you could tell Alon Day was a very talented yeah. race car driver. It, it, he, uh, the, the first um, first driver from Israel to run in a uh, NASCAR-sanctioned event. And they love him over there as well. He, he wasn't horrendous in his... I think no. he only did one or two cup races. Mm. I think 14th he ended up finishing, which cup series-wise isn't horrendous if you haven't got a lot of funding. Oh. Yeah, and you you know you've just sort of come in for one or two races, so very respectable. Um, and yeah, he was racing in that esports series, and he was class of the field. He was at high level, relatively speaking, and he was class of the field all the time. Yeah, Larson back into the pit lane, and uh, the Euro series had their uh, first weekend this uh, weekend at Valencia. So he was out uh, there as well. But we'll see how they all run. Weren't for the first time in five years, I think. It's four or five years where they run at an oval for the first time. Just realise there's a uh, selfie cam that's yeah. there as well. Should we try and get on it? <laughs> it's in the comms box. Let's, put, let's get it all on wave. Hello. Yeah, but uh, it's the 
only an official NASCAR event outside of the U- U.S. to have an oval. Wow, look at that! <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you brought up Alon Day. That that's that was a nice memory. I, I I'm glad <laughs> to hear that he's doing well because yeah, he was. You could tell there was a lot of talent there, and four-time uh, Euro Series champion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, glad glad to hear that he's doing well and of well. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, JB, take over for me here. This is this is your channel. I'm not going to make any comments on what's going on in Israel. I don't want to get anyone in trouble. Oh no, I think we. I think we're all in the same uh, boat there, my friend. As well, it's uh, it's terrifying what's happening over there, as well. Especially, it's, hey guys. It's, I'm sorry, I'm saying it's just it's it's a very yeah, close. I don't want to interrupt. It's it's very close to home actually as well because. Um, uh, Kellyanne, who's my uh, eldest sister, her and her partner uh, spent a lot of time over there, of course, because he, he worked there as an architect. And when in the last few months he was working over there, everything was starting to kick up as well. But he does have uh, friends still over there working who are hopefully going to get back safely as well. So uh, it's a very, very scary time still. And uh, hopefully everybody... Uh, it just, just end. It's, just, it's, just, it's, it's ridiculous in this day and age. Absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, JT, what were you going to say? Yeah, absolutely. But uh, if you look at down on the board at 33rd place, guys, guess who's back on the lead lap? Yes, Kyle yes. Larson. Larson. He just came into the pits as well, Kyle Larson. So uh, it's the comeback trail on. He'll be hoping to make a little bit better progress than Carl Bush, who started at the back and gained a fair chunk of places, but... Not really able to do much from there. With the checkered flag, you are 96. No, that is wrong. Where? A hundred? What am I talking? Yeah, 131 to go. Wait, no. What am I talking? No, no, no. What are you no, going no, 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 about? No. My my timing screen is not updating. We have 96 to go at the moment. We're about yeah, to 96 have 90, to go. There 90, we go. 95. Don't, don't try to add on an extra 35 laps to it. <laughs> he still thinks <laughs> the second it's... second stage was a slog. He still thinks it's a 500 mile race. <laughs> no, my uh, my timing screen wasn't updated. I've, uh, if it was a 500 mile race, I would be dead by I the would. end of it. I would. Oh, gosh. Hello, Amy. Good. Watch out. So many of these races that used to be 500 miles that thankfully we've cut down. Sh uh, shall we give Tom a restart? Oh, go. Go on then, Tom. Go on, have a start. Oh, this is exciting. Well, here we go then. Uh, so uh, out of nowhere, it's Bubba Wallace who will be taking the restart uh, in that number 23 from the front row, joined by Chase Briscoe. So slightly jumbled up order at the end of this restart. But stage three, uh, getting ready to get underway here. It's the run to the line, 96 laps to go in this race. Should fly by if we get it under green running. Pace car is into the pit lane. Then Bubba Wallace ready to get underway with Chase Briscoe. We have the green flag here for the final stage of the day from the Texas Motor Speedway. And Bubba Wallace gets a fantastic start. They run too wide down into turn one. Bubba under a little bit of pressure as Briscoe on that outside line, trying to put that pressure on on the inside line. I thought maybe Harrison Burton and Ty Gibbs were trying to gun for the lead of the race. Not quite able to do anything there though. The number 21 now gets to the inside line and is trying to go for the move. Harrison Burton out of nowhere gets a fantastic overspeed and it's to the lead of the race Bubba. judge. Bubba's oh, and on the out. outside line. Oh, there goes Bubba Wallace. He's round and we've got a caution. 14 around as well with Chase Briscoe. And he's hit Bubba the wall. Wallace just keeps it going. Oh, no. Yeah, so Briscoe into the wall. Bubba Wallace kept it going in the end. They threw that yellow oh. immediately. We can't even get through a lap. And the tyre's gone down only. Two tyres down for uh, as well for Chase Briscoe. Come on, NASCAR. We don't Man. need to go yellow for 10 minutes. We can go green next time by. Come on. Sensible pill. I mean, that I fear that's not going to happen. <laughs> that was a daredevil move by Harrison Burton. Mm. Uh, all the credit in the world for Har uh, Harrison for what he just did. And I mean, that... That put Wallace in a very vulnerable spot. That was a great <laughs> save by Wallace and nearly a great... I, I, I would call that a save from Briscoe, too. He saved that. Larson's going. Ironically. Yeah, go on. Uh, 
Oh, well, he's got a bit of help there. <laughs> yeah. Top going into the wall. He got a second tap that sent him back round. Uh, it, it just didn't... He had more clearance than he thought. That's all that happened there. Um, he didn't have as much clearance as he thought, rather. Josh Berry's been released from the medical centre. He is OK after his double hit into the wall. That was a bit bigger. Oh, that was just three into one doesn't go. And yeah, that was a Constantino, unfortunately. But Briscoe helping him out. And then another great save. If you find yourself going left, was it, was it? if you find yourself going right, turn left. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah, go right to go left. <laughs> Yeah, if you, if you spin that, left, go right. Was that, from, was that from Cars? Yeah. If you're not yeah. first, you're last. We'll get oh, all no, that, was, that, was, that was from the other movie. The, the, <laughs> the, oh, that, that God bless it movie. What a film. <laughs> Which one, oh, Cars boy. or Cars 2? <laughs> Talladega Nights. Oh, yeah, Talladega, Talladega Nights, Nights. yeah. Oh, uh, well, me and Megan are watching oh. that next week. I know we're not covering Talladega, but we're watching the Talladega Nights as well. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna do. Now, I know I've got the best Talladega race. I've got that one later on in the year, uh, as well. But I, I am so doing. Welcome back to the longest crash in NASCAR. Oh, <laughs> I love how in the middle of a movie they just show an advert for apple beans and uh, everybody does a bat an eyelid. It's brilliant. <laughs> Thing is though, it is one of the, it is the best oh, movie for NASCAR because it is honestly true. Honestly, I love how I'm a French racing driver from Formula U. Uh. <laughs> I was like, yes, brilliant. Oh, it's brilliant. I love that film. Oh, my. <laughs> it is roughly how foreign drivers get treated in NASCAR as well. And that's the funniest thing about it. There's a, almost a funny irony in it. In that there has been multiple instances over the years where the, the, the sort of European drivers have come into NASCAR and been rammed off the road. <laughs> I look, me and Megan often find each other going, ah, oh, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> we pass each other. And especially, Megan's favourite quote is, you have spilled my macchiato. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh, my God. We need, can we, is that on Prime Video? Can we do a watch along on Twitch of that? Because that, you can watch <laughs> movies, can't you, on Twitch? That'd be great. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, I, will, I will definitely tune into that if yeah. you do that. <laughs> the fork in the in the leg as well isn't great. <laughs> Sorry, I just remembered the best bit. <laughs> the best bit is when he crashes, gets out of the car, he goes off screen, runs back on, adjusts his boxers, and he's going, you know, I'm on fire, and it's like that invisible fire is burning my friends. <laughs> I love that film. <laughs> Just the stupidest movie. <laughs> but it's so good. <laughs> oh my god. Oh lord. Oh, it's so good. They had they had no idea what they built when they made that movie. What was yeah. that? 2005? 2006? A long time ago now. It's right about then, yeah. 20. Uh, what? Oh, 19 years ago as well. Wow. Wow. Well. It's been about six years they, since I've watched it, actually. Uh, I, I, could, I could tell you, uh, this tells you what kind of a person I am, and I don't think it's a very positive... Uh, <laughs> this could be anything. ...positive <laughs> note on what kind of person I am. I know what I know what race they used film out of. They used film for that movie from the 2005 UAW Ford 500 at Talladega. I thought you know that. Yeah, so it must be 2006, then. Yeah, it must have been 06, yeah, because they moved, They used film from 2005. Also, you, so. please tell me, you're a NASCAR fan. Every time we go to Talladega, you have to be listening to We Belong. Uh, that, I've got that on straight away. As soon as I know it's race day, it's like, Alexa, play it. And it's like, we belong to the... And run, running down the start finish day. I've wanted to recreate that for years as an introduction to one of the seasons. Like, for years. I've, I wanted to do it at Cadwell, never been able to. But I have a racetrack to myself. I can walk on Tuesday. Might just have a little nice intro. Oh, oh I know. Lord. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We're getting ready. Oh. Who wants this one, then? Who does want it? I, I'm, I, 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 well, it's been a while since Matthew's had one. Yeah, well, go on. I feel like I've had all of them. <laughs> JT, JT, wake up, wake up, wake up. 
Go. Hello. You go. You go. Come on. Okay. Ready for the restart. Pace car in. We are green flag once again. Burton is taking the lead. Then Hamlin on the inside of Reddick. Still down the inside, but Reddick goes on the outside and takes second away with a car lead. And now is catching, catching on Burton. Down the back straight. That was unexpected. Hello. Sorry. That was good. Look at the 71 with Zane Smith come out of nowhere. Reddick takes the high line through turn three and four. That's a 24 degree banking. And immediately, look at that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Go on, Matthew. Oh my gosh. I was just, sorry. I was <laughs> just coming out of my skin, jumping out of my skin. Chase Elliott and Zane Smith nearly had a coming together on the exit of the turn four. I'm telling you, Chase Elliott multiple times today elbows out and sharpen and he's in position to win this race no 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 he's got the hooters out <laughs> oh, <God>. uh, <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> kyle bush is going to set up the track as well as we get a lead change nearly reddick's gonna go round trying to get ahead of burton into turn one and into two he's on the outside line reddick's gonna give full power burton's on the low line reddick goes round the outside was good he hit the front yeah. in a great move yeah well this is a guy that's won here at texas a couple of years ago it was his first career oval win blaney's in the Blaine wall blaney's in the race. wall blaney's in the wall top of turn three and four and the yellow's out now what had they thrown uh, that yellow blaney hit the wall he was tailgating it but he's, the yellow's out he's only he's only slightly hit the wall i saw the yellow yellow's yellow. out about 45 it's... seconds ago oh this Blaney. is that's ridiculous. Was, oh, no, he's in the wall again. Oh, he's hit, okay. He's hit the oh, wall okay. twice. Yeah. Not that ridiculous. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's hit the wall twice because he he he, he, skate, he scraped it round the back half of the track at three and four. Then he scraped it back now at one and two. So he had he must have a steering issue. He's doing it again, Alex. John, John, John Hunter Nemechek got in the wall too. So we had two of them what? in the wall, and that's Blaney has found it in at least turn two, maybe even somewhere before that, but he found it in turn two, and uh, we get another yellow. Last time out, we had 11. We've got 10 already. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. He came from way down the track and oh. lost control. Blaney did, and he got the right rear and the right front with that. So what happened to Nemechek? Yeah, Nemechek was somewhere in turn three, I thought. Yeah. was way up the track. Oh, we got it all going on. Tenth caution. <laughs> Omi. <sighs> Omi can't believe it. <laughs> Last time we had ten pit stops, now we've got ten caution. <laughs> Megan would be doing her nut if she stayed for this one, but she left after NAS she left after MotoGP. But the problem is, her laptop is in there, she's probably watching the stream. Hi Megan. Oh, that was just so bad. Blaney did well, though, to save it, but he's then touched the bow and smashed the front left. Well, and you can see the issue with the configuration of this track in turns one and two. Yeah. It's so wide, but no one runs <laughs> beyond the second lane. And when you lose control, you just keep sliding forever. Slide for ages up before you hit the wall. Would Texas be better as a short track? Texas would be better blown to smithereens. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean it, it, right now short tracks aren't really hitting right now because of the car and the short track package isn't creating good races on short tracks so who knows I know a lot of people want to turn it into a super speedway like they did Atlanta I don't know if that's the answer either because then we would have four super speedways and I mean Atlanta is special on what it is on what Atlanta is now don't try to recreate it because if everything's special, then nothing's special. That felt like a poetic line. <laughs> um, and so I don't know what to do with Texas. They've just absolutely ruined it. I know. Just stay at Cota. That was okay. Well, the problem is SMI and the people in at Texas Motor Speedway is never want to get going to get rid of Texas Motor Speedway. Mm. They want they want to have a presence in Dallas Fort Worth. And uh, that gives it to them. You, you could quite easily change it, though. Um, I, I would suspect that it's not too difficult to to open up another lane. 
on the track, you know, reprofile it so that you can open up another lane. You will have the space, you know. Mm. Figure it, it's a, it's a project and a project for someone smarter than uh, than me. But I would suspect there is a possibility of, of opening up that other lane. Well, all the kind of... time you have to leave the space. All the time you have to leave the space. And well, and of course the <laughs> issue is, is they repaved it, and repaves are just so golly. They gave one to go very quick on that. Oh, God, that repaves, <laughs> repaves are so tenuous because then. It takes so long for the track to be weathered in and for other grooves to open up. So they don't want to repave it again anytime soon. And I don't know, how, are you able to reconfigure a track without repaving it? I, I don't, I'm not smart enough to tell you if that's possible or not, but. Three laps. Just oh. a mess. Oh. Just... Is that all? Yeah. Uh, Josh. Yes. As I'm losing the world. I've, I have calculated the uh, cost for the studio and I want to go cry in a corner. <laughs> right. Mine was five grand. What was you, What's yours at? And it's not that. Uh, extra. We're currently... So it's what I've got plus yeah. 611. 611 quid? <laughs> but... Remember, that's for both sides, mine and my dad's. We're coming to the green, then. Let's hope we have... Who's going to take this one? Because we've all done one. <laughs> I, I, say, I say let JB take this one. Right, hang on a second. Hopefully it's blood. <laughs> green, green, green. Who's going to have the restart this time as we head down towards turn one? Reddick's on the inside, Burton's on the outside as we come through. Look out for Hamlin. Can he have a little attack? He gets a little touch back through one and two. Good restart as well. Three wide from the back. Look at the move as well. That's being made by Truex. Three wide and makes about three places in succession. Great move. Elliot's getting blocked. Zane Smith's going down low. Byron's in the middle of that as well as we get through thread three and four. That was a very quick restart, Matthew, as well. It didn't take long until we had problems. But Elliot holding on to third. And here comes Smith and Gibbs. And Byron. Yeah, Elliot is, uh, Elliot's riding a rocket right now. And I think his teammate William Byron is too. They're up to third and fourth. And those two Toyotas up front best advice you could give them right now is don't look back because those two <laughs> Chevrolets are absolutely flying. We'll see if they can get through. Wow, Keselowski with the elevator ride, top to bottom to try to get around Christopher Bell in turn three. Kyle Larson wanted to follow, he couldn't, as Keselowski gets around Bell and Corey LaJoy, but Larson now back on the lead lap. He's running 20th. Actually, he's running, well, he just got passed for 20th, but we'll keep a eye on Larson to watch his progress from the back as they are three wide Hornet's Nest from about 12th on back. Ryan Blaney's going to have to come into the pit lane to serve a two lap penalty for extra members over the pit wall. So, and the 43 is dropping back as well as that's going to be Chastain nearly tapping him around. Jones going to have to get loose. Oh, and Chastain nearly got loose as well. Yeah, he was out of shape on the exit of four, made a good save. Austin Sendrick behind him just threw a sledgehammer block on somebody, but Chastain's trying to get back up to where he was before his last pit stop. By the way, the pit stop strategy is all over the freaking place. I can't keep track of who's on what strategy at this rate, but Chastain, remember, who was leading, won that second stage, has given up that track position, and he's having a hard time getting it back. Here's Truex and Harrison Burton in a fist fight for eighth. What do you think of the restart then, Tom, as well? They've all been a bit well behaved this time around. Uh, Reddick looking in a really good position, isn't he, to uh, mm. to win this race. He's made four stops, Elliot on five. Uh, Byron also on four. Zane Smith, ooh, he's ooh, running uh, quite high up. But bear with us. Lawson is on the outside line indeed. Uh, he's back in this all of a sudden, isn't he? And the number five. And the number 20. Uh, well, I have a number five, he said. Five, I forgot. Five, 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 five. Yeah, Larson was backing off massively, but it was the 23 of uh, Bubba Wallace who was closing back up. But Larson looked like he was standing still there, Matthew. He got dropped. Where has he dropped to anyway on the yeah. board? Yeah, Larson's really struggling in the traffic here. He had gotten up to 20th. Now he's backslid to 25th, and Jimmy Johnson might be about to go around him here. So Larson is really struggling here. He's in all of this turbulent air in the traffic. Five cars struggling. 
Okay, we decided not to have TV pictures anymore uh, because that's what it likes to do. So I'm going to hand over commentary. Uh, oh, okay. Um, it really has decided it's given Lots up on me. Yeah, it's gone off. Right. Side by side with Bush around turn one. I'll hand over it's commentary tight. to you lot. Shall I turn my TV picture on? Yes, because uh, mine seems to have just given up. So I'm going to go find out what's wrong with it. You two, you lot take over. There you go. Well, Larson really struggling here in this traffic. He's gotten away from Johnson a little bit now. So maybe by getting away from this bit of traffic, get some clean air on the nose of that Camaro, maybe he can make some gains. But he is 10 seconds off the lead. Meanwhile, further towards the front, Tom, Harrison Burton and Chris Busher for ninth. As uh, going through into turn two, we go with uh, Danny Hamlin. Still nine tenths of a second down on our race leader. I think Tyler Eddick's found himself in a really strong position here, Matthew. Yeah, I agree. I, uh, these Texas races these last few years has really been about positioning yourself late to get the track position. And now Reddick and Hamlin and Elliott, they have this track position. Problem is, everyone still has to make another pit stop. And how about Zane Smith, this rookie, former Truck Series champion, running in the fifth position. What a run by this young rookie from California. And he, he's well and truly in the mix here. Everyone in the mix, and uh, obviously each race carries the uh, weight of qualifications, the playoffs as well, unless that rule's changed in the side that I haven't watched NASCAR. Uh, Carl Larson then, charging his way through the field, looking at the 23 now. Where's he up to looking at my timing screen? Uh, Carl Larson all the way up in at two by the looks of things, if you bear with me. One at second, well, the looks of things. Carl Larson all the way up into 24. So from two laps down, not a bad run for him. Give us another caution or so. Uh, I would suspect, Matthew, Carl Larson's going to find himself uh, well and truly back in to this race. Yeah, I, I would think so. He's just going to get a little bit lucky with where the cautions fall and who pits and who doesn't and does he pit and all of that. But I, obviously, Larson has a really good card. It's all about can he get the track position uh, that he had earlier when he lost it with that loose wheel. Hi. Uh, but... If he can get back up, uh, I think Larson's in a really good in good shape. But might be difficult to do that uh, if we stay green the rest of the way. But of course, as we know, we've had a lot of yellow in this race. I have no uh, idea what happened. We well, imagine we'll have more yellow as well uh, towards the end. Running uh, totally green from here with 70 laps to go uh, will be difficult. However, in terms of time, not a great deal of time left in the race. 47 looking to the inside, but not able to find uh, a position just yet. Uh, the 21 on the outside will be undertaken by the 43. Uh, only actually in real terms got about half an hour left in this race, uh, which means Carl Larson needs to have a caution soon. If you pit now, we'll pit within the next 10 laps even, uh, you should be able to make it to the end as well. My poor feet. Yeah. I don't know if I can last half an hour more. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> half an hour, I think, is being very kind on how many yellows we could have from here to the end. A half an hour green running, anyway. Roughly yeah. 35, maybe. Uh, nice yeah, you're, you're, right, you're right about that time. If we were to go green the whole way, you would be right, yes. 68 Good. Go. I'm glad I can do. <laughs> I'm glad I can do 70 times 0 0.5 on a calculator. That's <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Megan said but, uh, uh, 70 gone. times 0 0.5 uh, would be 35. <laughs> Nerd. I know. As we've got Chastain Ugh. down the inside of Burton. 68 laps to go. Four men in the commentary box. How many will actually survive the end of the broadcast? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> Reddick leads by two seconds now to Hamlin. He has just taken off in that Toyota. And there's they've with that new package, Matthew. They're looking very a lot more better. As well, that was short pickings, wasn't it, for Truex to pass Gregson? Never mind. That was easy for him. Yeah. 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 Truex blowing past. Uh, Gregson right there and uh, Eric Jones 
moving through this field as well. He's up into the 11th oh, position, and here we have Harrison Burton on pit road in the 21. Now, again, as I said earlier, with all of these cautions, it's hard to keep track of who's on what strategy. So this very well may be a scheduled stop for the 21 crew. Um, this is a long way to go to the end. They can make it on fuel from 66 laps, but that would be asking a lot uh, from the tires to go 66 laps. I don't think we have gone that long in a green flag run so far in this race, but no. we should be seeing Reddick and Hamlin. Oh my goodness, Austin Sendrick brushing the wall on the way to turn one right in front of Kyle Larson, kept it pointed the right direction. Uh, but we should uh, be seeing these leaders coming to pit road pretty soon. Uh, Reddick has been on his tires for now over 60 laps. So yeah, Just Reddick, Dane. Hamlin, Elliott, and guys, they'll be on pit road here fairly soon. Did Chastain pit that time, or did he go through? I think he went through. Uh, I think he last pitted at the end of stage two. Cool, awesome, because he was very low through turn three and turn four while battling with a car, but it was too low to be the low line, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> but it was been... the low line for Chastain. Yeah. Hasn't been in the pit lane as far as I can tell. Not on the monitor anyway. Blaney and Burton, the last two, as Logano slips past uh, Keslowski and Chastain passes Busher. Last one up to 20th as well. He's uh, he's slowly climbing, uh, slowly climbing, but he is climbing up to 20th uh, from 24th. And last time we checked in with him, I want to say if he can get strategy correct he's probably got the fastest race car on the track if he can get to right, 15th as he's trying to make even more time up and i don't know if that was a, a position gained or not uh yeah by it was 19th of things. he's up to 19th yeah, yeah nice thing, so he's up even more even more time if he can get to 15th or so maybe even top 10 by the next well, not the next caution but in a reasonable space of time he should be back in this hunt well, and again, the question is, with these leaders, Reddick and Hamlin and Elliott and Byron, they're going to be pitting here, as I said, fairly soon because it's been so long since they've last been on pit road. How will that cycle Larson? Where will that cycle Larson to? There it comes on our screen. That's perfect timing. 60-plus plus laps since the top seven have been to pit road. So where will Larson then cycle through out of those pit stops, and then can he get a timely caution? Larson could very well be back in this race. Reddick not pitting this time, stays out at least one more time. I would think, if they can, these leaders would like to try to get to about 50 to go before pitting, but not sure if they can get that far on fuel or not. But I'd say that would probably be the target area. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that. Larson, by the way, still holding the fastest lap of the race. Uh, he set that early on in the day, 29.072. Uh, that's the fastest lap. That's the lap that's held since his very first leading stint. Remember, he led for a lot of this race. Yeah. Uh, it, that, he's, he's got the best car here. Hmm. Uh, as we know, the best car does not always win in NASCAR, but the best car here is that five car but he's just stuck two laps down after the loose wheel, stuck in traffic, having a hard time working his way through the traffic. But the five car is the best car here. Make no mistake about that. In comes the 17 of Bush, and I've just had a look. The fuel, as that is Chastain, goes down low on the 43. The fuel window is 62 to 67 laps, so they're past that, but remember, cautions as Save well it. will help them out yeah so we're gonna expect them to come in maybe in the lane inside the next 10 laps i would say yes ben schneider's just said awful cuts and almost everything that's happened of note has been while they're in commercial uh, w now <laughs> when do we invite ben to the commentary box to experience the international feed because i think he might well. yeah he might be jealous <laughs> I love Ben. <laughs> I really do. Must grab him on a broadcast. When Josh T, oh, as you see, Truex with Gibbs side by side. And Truex is going to make it up into sixth position. And here comes the 47 of Steinhaus a Jr. on the inside line. And that's going to be contacted. Oh, carefully, practically moves him out of the way using the force. And up into 
Uh, seventh position goes Steinhaus. Triggs goes to sixth. That was brilliant. Gives down two places. Well, I'll tell you what, Stenhouse is in a position to be the leader of this race because it's been only about 40 laps since he last pitted. So the top five or six are going to have to pit before him. So if this stays green, top six will pit. Stenhouse very well could be the leader of the race. And then, like I said, with Larson, this could go for anybody. If he could just get a timely caution, Stenhouse could be sitting in a really good spot as William Byron comes to pit road. First of the leaders to hit pit road for their final stop. No one's down there. Jamie, Jamie has bet. William Byron been happy with this race car today? Just a little bit tight right now. It was good enough last fall when they went to victory lane. Get enough fuel in it to make it to the end. Almost stalled it right there. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I was going to ask. I know that USON have got Talladega, but JT, when's our next when are we back in the box? We are, I believe, Isn't there was a question mark over Dover. We hadn't confirmed right, what's that. What's clashing? Reddick, Reddick and Hamlin in the box, by the way. I ah, believe. yes. Are they going to yes. go down pit lane? Yeah. So they're both coming down. Regan Smith. Tyler Reddick was strong the tires as we are having cycles and all those cautions said the car was continuing to just act weird for him but once he was able to get out front no comments about it since then jamie his team owner denny hamlin said he's really tight he said this car does something different every single what's wrong with ready long stop slight adjustment air pressure for uh, denny hamlin trouble on Tyler. this happens far too often with this 2311 team got green this on its car 2311 it happens all the time with Reddick and Wallace struggles on pit road. He's just lost the lead to Hamlin. 2311 just cannot get rid of these pit stop problems. Unfreaking believable. It's pit every stop. week. Pit stops your biggest, biggest gain on these circuits. Uh, you've got a 20 second lap time. Uh, 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 five seconds can be the difference between a lap because of yeah. how long it takes to speed back up and get your tires back up to temperature. So it's crucial. And, and at the end of the day, uh, you can't win the race. The race can be won and lost on pit road. It's, it's what I'm trying to say. And that's evidence there. And uh, believe me, Reddick has lost a lot of races the last couple of years on pit road. That's close there. But uh, the uh, one of the... Uh, Truex getting out of the pit lane. Cars, yeah, because there's two of them. No idea why. Dylan and Truex literally identical. From the front. Yeah, they are. It's taken me a while to get what's the difference between the two. So yeah, what's clashing at Dover? Uh, I'm. Uh, it's IndyCar Barber, but I'm happy to team up with uh, Matthew to get it on the channel. Looks like it will be a USRN double then from Talladega to Dover. So and I will put that on the. Yeah, so are we back oh, in Dover. three weeks' time? We are back on uh, the. Uh, Middle Wait, no, we're, no we're, not. We're, we're not. We're we're not even in Kansas because of Miami. When, the, when are we back? A month? We're back on the 12th of May. We're in Darlington. A, oh, right, so we get Darlington, that's fine. So we get... We're off for a month. Looks huh. like I'm going to have to team up with you, Matthew, to get them on the channel for a while. <laughs> wow. This sounds like it. Okay, wow, okay. Well, you you handled it expertly today. Uh, but it will be... Um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to create that camera for JT as well. This is Chastain coming to the pit lane. Who said caution? I said awesome. Oh, awesome. I thought you said caution. I was like, what, where? Okay, All right, let's, let's see now where Chastain cycles back onto the track. After this pit stop, if he Two wheels. can get out around Hamlin, because remember, Hamlin has jumped Reddick after that slow stop in the 45. So we'll see where Chastain cycles through. Well, we hope we'll see. Yeah, because that he only took two wheels, Matthew, as well. So he's going to be interesting as... Oh, hang on. Why is, why is Truex back in? He just came in. Yeah, true. I wonder if he's got a loose wheel. The way he was shaking the car back and forth, I wonder if Truex has a loose wheel. Oh, Let the... me go on to the tweet. 
day goes from bad to worse for Truex. And he looked quite good. Let's take a look at it in a replay. This is Truex's car. Yeah, look at the left rear. The left rear, they're struggling to get the lug nut secured and the jack drops and that's the signal for the driver to leave and the jack dropped and they did not get that lug nut oh. sealed on the left rear. He left, left rear was loose. Back out. Yeah, Yeah, and that's what I was talking. So that was before when they came in. So they knew that the car was weird, and that's why he came down pit road. So they've secured it. He's now gone back out, but Trix is two laps down with 46 to go. Wow, that, that's a massive moment for Trix. Hold on a minute. God almighty, Fox has missed this. Tyler Reddick has passed Denny Hamlin on the racetrack. That is for what will be the lead. So yes. Hamlin beat Reddick out because Reddick had that slow stop, but Reddick has now repassed Hamlin. Fox has totally missed it. That's down in 14th place because everyone else in front has yet to pit. And into the pit lane now because Bubba Wallace, there's the 22 of the Garno. He's the race leader, but you're right. Yeah. So Reddick and Hamlin, 13th and 14th. Yes. Reddick might do well here. That break on fire there for, for Bubba. I swear I saw a little bit of a break fire. Everyone there? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Well, I didn't sit. Oh, now, okay. Now, now they're going to show how Reddick passed Hamlin. Thank you for finally showing us. They had, had a us. big run out of turn four in his slipstream down the front stretch, peeled to his inside. And Reddick, boy, made it look very, very easy, passing, well, his boss. Remember, Denny Hamlin owns that yeah. 45 car for 23.11. So Reddick passes the boss yeah. to take over what will be the lead once the pit stops cycle through, or what would be the lead if the pit stops cycle through, I think is how we should word that, because we don't know if the pit stops will cycle through. Uh, if we get a yellow, Joey Logano, and Brad Keselowski are at the front here, having not yet stopped. And uh, how many are there, Josh? 12 that have not yet stopped. Yes, because Tyler Reddick's in 13th place, and he is uh, the net leader of this race. But Joey Logano has pitted seven times today, just to keep you up. So he's going to go through seven. Next. Yeah, but it gets worse. Dylan's pitted nine times. And do you know what that means? Megan is really not going to be happy when he has to pit for a tenth time. To quote, <laughs> who needs to pit ten times in one race? That was back at, um, um, where were we? Nashville. Nas for, Nashville, 20, uh, uh, yes, was it 20, I, 21? I remember that well. I was actually in on that one. That was uh, oh, yes. Elio Castroneves in Nashville. Yes. Oh, my poor feet. Anyone mind if I take five laps down? Oh, my feet. <laughs> right. I'll uh, take five laps up. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, swapsies. Seriously, I, I, I need more comfier shoes. I'm wearing very broken Converse now in, in the Converse box. Oh, I'm standing up again. I've just been... been inf oh, hang on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They've been very yeah. weird with that today. Because guess what, guys? Well, wait to They've see gone to a commercial break, which means one thing. Yep. Wait to see what it is. But the yellow's I out. I wonder what it could be. Well, the 42 is going to go around the outside of the two here as well. I wonder if that's going to be. Oh, yep. Yeah, there we go. Right he goes. And bang into Bom the wall. 42 hits the wall for the second time today. And out goes the caution for John Hunter Nemechek. And he's right actually in the center of the track. Let's hope no one hits him. My oh. goodness. Larson was close there. As we freeze TV pictures, I hope he's not going to lose again because he's done the same thing again. So, no, it's back. Caution's out then. Matthew, uh, what do we do? This is a huge, this is a huge moment for this caution for these guys that have not yet stopped. Logano, Keslowski, Priest. Now they're going to be able to stop under yellow. The Nothing. question will be, will the drivers like Reddick, Hamlin, and Elliott, mm. will they pit? 
for the final time to get fresh tires and a top off on fuel, or will they stay out to get the track position? I would imagine that Reddick, Larson, uh, Hamlin, Byron, those guys, I think they're going to stay out to get the track position, but then you're going to have Logano, Keselowski, Priest, LaJoy, Bush, Briscoe, Suarez. Those guys are going to get fresh tires. They're going to have fresher tires by about 15 laps, and they will be rocketing from the middle of the field on the restart. This is going to be a big restart. Now we still... You have to go track position from here, though. Yeah. You have no other choice. Yeah, I agree. 38, 38 laps to go. That's not a great deal of running. And remember, it it's relatively difficult to overtake on this track. Um, as silly as that sounds. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if it's relatively difficult. I think it's difficult. <laughs> Fox saw Grid Round I mean, Table and said, hold my Coke Zero Sugar, you've got to try it first. <laughs> That's a Joe Samiego. They've missed everything today, and these are the people going for the IndyCar contract. Well, I, I know no one wants to hear this. Go, go on. <laughs> but I really hope that Fox does get IndyCar if... The plan is to bring in Alan Bestwick, but... Really? I don't want to sidetrack us on that, but if they can bring in Alan Bestwick, I would love if Fox did get IndyCar, but we'll see. I think Alan um, Bestwick would be great if he wasn't... Uh, I think Alan Bestwick was better on the NASCAR coverage back in the day, but he he was great on his own, but he was paired with Dollar and Dollar. Uh, with Scott Goodyear <laughs> and Eddie Cheever. Yes, he was. My God! <laughs> Those two could put you to sleep. Literally, yeah. I did half a season with them in in my years in the commentary, and I literally was like, "Are you guys ever, you know?" Did I was like commentating with two eels? It, they, I feel so sorry for Alan Beswick. But yeah, get him, get him back, I, and put I, him with I some like, good people. I, I liked Scott Goodyear. He was very knowledgeable. He was a terrific analyst on just analyzing yeah. what was going on. But to your point, he was very... Yeah. He was a flat line. He never moved on the emotional scale. And then Eddie Cheever. Oh, Lord. I, I want to know who made the decision to put him on television. Oh, my Hit Lord. Open. Here we go. Okay, well, quickly, here's my... Uh, here's what I want. Two-person commentary team. You don't need three. Get rid of Townsend Bell yep. and take James Hinchcliffe over and partner him with Alan Beswick. You'll have the best commentary team ever. Yes, yes. Work. Agree completely. Townsend needs to calm down. Townsend needs to come down a couple clicks. He screams more than anyone I've ever heard on IndyCar. I'd say it always annoys me because you'll have a pretty innocuous move down the inside. Yeah. And you just hear it from whoever this screech. Right? It's like you're not... <laughs> Oh. It annoys me because oh. we don't do that over here in our broadcasts. At what point do I hide? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to win the race off pit lane? It's going to be a Stuart Haas, guys. It's a Stuart Haas off pit road. It's Priest. <laughs> Priest. Look who's in second. Look who's in second out of nowhere. Oh my god, here's Ed Bush. Oh okay, that is Joey, actually good. Joey Logano. Dropped down from the lead. He's now in third. Oh no! Here's the other thing with Townsend. He needs to stop stepping on top of Lee. Oh, I know. Oh, it drives me crazy. It drives me crazy when analysts step on top of the play-by-play -play person. Um, you don't have to God. tell me. <laughs> and just, I, I just, oh God, it bothers me to no end that Townsend just will never shut up. Like so. The 2021 Indianapolis 500, the one that Elio won, to mm. win his fourth. He makes the pass on Alex Pillow. The crowd is going absolutely insane. You've got this wonderful sound yeah. of 250,000 people cheering at once. And Townsend and Paul Tracy oh God, why are put screaming the over the top of it. That, why put them in the booth together? That was weird. I think, yeah. I, I think James Hinchcliffe. And also, he's on the F1 uh, TV broadcast now. And he's a really good commentator. No choose this time around. He's a really good commentator. And he works across the series. So put Alan Beswick alongside James Hinchcliffe in a two-person commentary booth. You've got IndyCar sorted. Yeah, I agree. 
or or Joshua Birch. Yeah, that'll do. In the court. <laughs> no, I couldn't. I couldn't move stateside permanently. I couldn't. Think about. I moan about getting up for half the F1 races, and I have to get up for all of them. I think I might actually. Ha I will never sleep then. I would literally never <laughs> sleep. I'm practically an American already. The amount I do. Ah, this is an interesting one. The pace cars become part of the field. <laughs> Just wave around, taken there. Yeah. You might might have a little bit less horsepower, but you give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> bit more junk in the trunk there as well. Um, not exactly, it's trimmed out, is it? I, I love the juxtaposition between European safety cars and American safety cars. Um, you know, we have former racing drivers with full safety gear, blood type on the car, and in NASCAR and Indy car, you have a bloke in shorts and t-shirt. Yeah, well, I just... <laughs> with, an, with a headset on, if you're lucky. Yeah, I, I'd just like to make it even better for you today, though, Tom, because uh, over here in Formula One, you've got uh, Bert Mylander, who is a very experienced yeah. racing driver, who's been the safety car driver for 20 years, and today's pace car driver is Dr. Phil. Have yes, we? yes, it was Dr. Phil who, yeah, who drove the pace car on the pace laps um, today. Now, I don't know who he's handed it off to. I don't I don't know who's the permanent driver. Kip Childress was the pace car driver. He retired a couple of years ago. Before that, it was Brett Bodine. And yes. uh, before that, it was Elmo Langley. I'll do it if they want me to. I'll Jesus do it. Jesus, job in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Half throttle. There you go, round the lap we I've, uh... Just quickly before we go to the green, I've uh, just had a look at who the NASCAR American uh, pace car driver is, and the reply is Stig's American cousin. <laughs> 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 okay, fine. fine I'll uh, I'll uh, let you know if I find anything. Matthew, it's all yours. All right. Get set for this restart. Could be the last one of the race, but. Of course, we don't know. With 33 laps to go, we're going to have Tyler Reddick and Denny Hamlin on the front row through the cycle of pit stops. Chase Elliott on that long winless drought of nearly 50 races. He'll restart third, and you, he's been aggressive all race long. Have to think that Chase is going to be aggressive on this restart. He's alongside William Byron. Green flag is out. We're racing again with 33 to go. And yeah, Elliott is Woo! shoving Reddick, and he's going to slice to his inside. Chase Elliott all the way to the bottom, goes three wide, and gets around both the Toyotas. Chase Elliott storms to the lead at Texas. And look at Ross Chastain. Just just Glenn this. Oh, and down low, that's going to be Truex coming back into the fight as well. He's come out of nowhere, and that was an amazing move. Hamlin up to second as well, but Chase Elliott leading really has put the burners on, and what a launch he's got across that line. Oh, the crowd going crazy. Sport's most popular driver. 42 races since his last win. He's up front, but he's going to have to keep it from Denny Hamlin. Hamlin, of course... When he has a sniff at the lead late in the race, it's like a Rottweiler going after a piece of meat. Can he wrestle the lead away from Chase Elliott? He's got 31 laps to try to do it. And there's a bit of drama further back as well in the pack coming into it. That's Kyle Busch, who's losing out. Brad Keselowski's going out high. Keselowski's going to try and take oh. it. This is with Byron as well. And is Bush a lap down? You know, Bush is intense, so he's dropped back. He's got back into it after the pit stops, but he's now dropped back. And there's the 99. That's Daniel Suarez, who is... Is he still in the mix? Yeah, he's back to eighth. He's come from two laps down. And Dylan's gone yeah, down Suarez low. Suarez and Bush. <laughs> Suarez and Bush both have really had difficult days, but they've gotten back into contention here. But Bush is three Oops. wide with Joey Logano and Austin yeah. Dillon. And Carson Hosovar pushes Logano through the middle of those two cars. Logano pierces the gap between those two. Remember, Logano's on fresher tires than anyone after pitting under the yellow. He's trying to make his way back to the front. Side by side, Logano going to take the middle line and she loses out actually to Dylan and Dylan's going to get the, the cut up and I hope Logano knows that because he'd have to take a bit of avoiding action over the five degree banking 
Less than 30 laps to go then here. Will we remain under green flag or will we have more yellows? Dare we say a chance of the overtime for the third race running. But right now, Elliot and Hamlin are leading at the front and they're pulling away. They're now 1.3 seconds clear to Chastain, but Hamlin two tenths back to Elliot. Yeah, Hamlin is chewing up the margin between himself and Chase Elliott. You know, Hamlin's run up front for most of this race, but he's also complained about the handling of his car for most of the race. But right now, it seems like it's clicking to his liking. He is close right in on Elliott. Behind those two, Tyler Reddick is trying to grab third back from Ross Chastain, unable to do so as they exited turn two. Now they'll drive off into turn three. Reddick still looking at the back of that aqua number one of Ross Chastain. Meanwhile, up front, Elliott just took the nose of the air off the nose of Hamlin's car, and he apped him by a couple of car lengths. This is getting very, very tasty as Chastain lifts and coasts. So does Reddick, but he's down low. You can hear the shifting of gears behind our ears. Up they go. And yeah, Hamlin's still closing in. Side by side for the back, though, as well as that Byron and Keselowski. I can't quite see. Yeah, it was. Keselowski on the high line, Byron. No, Byron high line, Kozlowski low line, Kozlowski goes through and takes fifth position. Hard to tell Five from the second of the lead. Uh, uh, Chase Elliott extending a little bit. Here goes the 45 uh, to the inside on Ross Chastain. This is for your notional uh, podium positions. Top three to be nice. Chastain on the outside, though, just able to hold on. This is a heck of a battle between... These two, Chastain and Reddick. Oh, and Reddick drives it hard into the bottom of turn three. Chastain oh. tried to shut the door. He couldn't. Reddick has opened up the door, and he has stormed through it. Wheel to wheel goes Reddick and Chastain. Still, they battle as they sweep back into turn number one, and Reddick again drives it in hard to the corner, and that'll let him make the pass. And look at Chastain, gets that toe immediately in the exit of two, but down the back stretch, she's not going to make the opportunity fight, he's lifted off and through, goes Brad Keselowski for fourth place. Brad Keselowski might be on for something here today. It's He's only two seconds back to Chase Elliott, and he's going to get clean air soon. When was the last time he won a race? It's been over a hundred races since Brad Keselowski yeah. last won. Talladega in 2021, the last time that Keselowski went to victory lane. Yeah, yeah I've got my notes here now as well, uh, just in front. So that means that Elliott's last win was Talladega in 2022, and Keselowski's yep. last win was Talladega in 2021. They're currently the two that might win today. Isn't that weird? Well, Elliot's going to have to fend off Hamlin here. Hamlin is closing if Fox ever wanted to show it to us. <laughs> uh, Hamlin is right on oh. Elliot here with about 23, 22 coming around this time. 22 He's going to go. Here we go. Here it is. Hamlin has muscled his way to the outside of the battle for the lead as well and truly on. Yahoo! He's got the move around the outside, but can he keep it off because Elliot's going to put the hooters on and the last two corners we can. They're side by side to the line. It's going to be 6,000 across the line, but can Hamlin get the drag around the outside of one and two? He's got him. Can he cut down low? We're on the wrong camera. Verdict up in the Oh! Yeah, Tyler Reddick, he hit it off of turn two. He was still battling with Chastain and Keselowski for third. I think actually Keselowski had gotten to his inside. Reddick went up, he smacked the wall, but we stay green, and Hamlin has completed the pass. Oh, he my got, goodness. He got a bit loose. After he hit the wall, he got a bit loose. I don't think that car is completely fine. He was complaining about it. Earlier on in the race, we've got a replay now, so we're seeing what happened with to him. So yeah, they were side by side for a while. Reddick has, oh. again, he's just got a little bit loose in the middle of the track. He was in no man's land. Uh, really? Drifted. Yeah. On board. Car just got loose on him. Yeah, it just, it, it, it's such, it's fine line the margin of error in turns one and two when you get up and out of the groove all you have to do is miss it by six inches and reddick is back slid to eighth hamlin now starting to step away from elliott by half a second oh i tell you what i don't i don't think hamlin's biggest worry needs to be elliott i think his biggest worry is keselowski yeah keselowski is flying he's within about five car lengths of elliott now 
I really want Brad Keselowski to win. I've always wanted Brad Keselowski to win. He's one of the nicest guys you can meet as well. He's a trained professional in media journalism, the same as what we have up in the booth right now uh, as well. Uh, with um, name escapes me at this, uh, Kevin Harvick. Thank you very much. That took a second uh, to get to me because we haven't said his name all night. But yeah, uh, it, it, it's good news and it's a good story. Can Brad get it as we're three wide further back in the pack? Because that's that Tyler Reddick having a battle as well as he's through on the inside line with Chase Briscoe. Well, and I mentioned earlier, Ooh. Keslowski. Wow, Reddick and Briscoe. It's extremely close on the exit of turn four. I mentioned earlier, though, the amount of success that the Roush team has had here in the past at Texas. They won the first race that was ever run here at Texas with Jeff Burton in 1997. They won the next year with the six car with Mark Martin in 98, Greg Biffle, Carl Edwards, Matt Kenseth. So much success here with Roush at Texas. Brad Keselowski, ever since becoming an owner driver with RFK, he has not won while he has been the co-owner of his team. He's got a really good shot today, but he's going to have to do it quickly because you know if he can get to Elliott, in the act of passing Elliott, he will lose time to Hamlin, and we're running down on laps. 16 laps to go, and they cross the stripe this time. Uh, and remember, seven tenths of a second is already a long time when you're already you're only lapping within a tenth of each other consistently. So actually... Uh, if, if he can't get past within the next couple of laps, this is pretty much Hamlin's race to lose. But we know what overtime's like. We know that that can happen. And we know that in all likelihood it will happen. John Hunter Nemechek has been released from pre-checks. He's okay. And Elliot's left the door Do you want open. to know how many quarters and laps we've had this race? We've had 11, but I want to know how many laps we've had. Yes. 54. Out of a 267, so 200, oh my God. That's too many. I don't want to put you off, but this move is about to happen, you know, between yeah. uh, Kozlowski and Chase Elliott. He's so, so close. Yeah, Kozlowski's car is really working a lot better than Chase. The problem is, is he's getting the clean air taken off the nose of his car when Elliott's able to just mirror him. Oh, what are we doing? Oh, we're yellow again. Oh. oh Lord! Have, have, have Fox just gone for a break? No, they're still on air. So we're about okay. to see it. What's happened? TV picture. I know who it is. Uh, Trots caution. That beats last time out. There's Kazaski. I'm going to take a bet. Is it Truex? Go on then. Go. Is it Truex? No, it's not Truex. It's Stenhouse. Oh, there he is. Sideways. Wow. Oh. What do you do now? Do you pit for fresh tires? Overtime. Or stay out. 13 uh, to go. Yeah. Not there yet. We wouldn't be there yet, but we're getting close. He's got two flats as well. He's bubbling around on the bottom. Yeah, he, oh, he's, he's doing he's a drag down. race burnout trying to get, uh, trying to keep from losing a lap, but I don't think that's going to happen. And he's depositing some debris on the start on the back stretch as well. Twelfth caution of the night, everyone. And yellows breed yellows. Oh, how did it happen? I was going to get. Is he? Does he touch the back of the 54? No, he's going to. Uh, yes, he does. Gets in the wake. Yeah, then he's going to go straight up into that wall. And again, look how wide the track is over there. You have all this room to catch it, and he nearly did. It's so dirty offline, and he's yeah, just going to spin is. it. Maybe that high line should be put back, and that would destroy the IndyCar racing, but it helped NASCAR. Oh, they, 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 they couldn't run it when they put the PJ1 on it. No one wanted to run it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what a mess. Well, I just don't know what well, to say. Well, this is... Uh, when pit road opens, and that should be, I would think, this time around, boy, are we going to get some interesting decisions made because do you keep your track position or do you come in for fresh tires? The reason that Keselowski is making this run is because his tires are about 15 to 20 laps fresher than that of Hamlin's and Elliott's. Yeah. So... Do you come in for fresh tires, 
do you protect your track position? I tell you what, who's on the same strategy as Keselowski and making up ground is Daniel Suarez. He's up to fifth. He's on that same tire strategy. This was yesterday's finish in the Xfinity Series. How close do you like it between Sam Mayer and Ryan Sieg? Two one-thousandths of a second at the flag yesterday. We're having a great year, aren't we, NASCAR? Thanks. Oh, for the gosh. Box. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're having just a tremendous season, especially if you just ignore the joke that the truck series has become. Yeah, I have, oh, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're tuning into the Grid Encore. Tune into the Grid Encore show uh, tomorrow because I think they're going to be talking about it as well. That's going to be something. Yeah. Pit road open this time. All right. We'll see who pits and who doesn't. I. We're probably going green with about seven to go. So... Seven or eight. So I wouldn't think that these leaders are going to come to pit road, but. If you're a guy, I'm just looking down the order here. If you're Austin Dillon in 11th, Carson Hosevar 12th, Zane Smith, Corey LaJoy, those guys, what do you have to lose? Well, it is you're another not, question. You're not going to do anything by following the leaders. So I would think those guys outside the top 10, whatever the leaders do, you do the opposite yeah. and hope it nets a game I, for you. I agree. However, you've got to think, you know, these ties have already been on for most people for about 15 laps now. Mm-hmm what advantage have you got you know let's assume those tires die after another you know seven okay then you've got three laps to make use of your advantage yeah it's a difficult one i agree that there is nothing to lose but it's so difficult because which person takes that gamble um you know what i mean because i know even if i'm thinking the bigger picture if i'm you know austin dillon and i see jerry logano come in just ahead of me i'm not following him in i'm staying out yeah, yeah I'm saying. that's true that's true uh, let's see. Hamlin has had his tires on for 45 laps. Oh. Elliott, 46. Keslowski, 27. Has and any... Suarez, 27. Guys, has anyone actually pitted? Bubba down. No, Bubba, no one pitted. Bubba down. 21 down have pitted. 21 to 31. Wallace, Haley, Jones, Bell, Sindrick, Henrik, Gregson, Gilliland, Jones, Burton, Trex Jr. They've all boxed. Laps Pit road closed. You are than the, the guys line. ahead of him, so that should help, Mike. Brad, okay, Brad's going to stay out. Brad's going to stay out. So he's he's going to take the lead and just hope he can get to the end of this one. Oh, it's so yeah, it's close. close. Next time by will be the lap to choose. Yeah, so no one of any consequence pitted there. Yeah. So the top 20 stayed out, so that remains unchanged. So I, we'll see. Um, it looks like, did you say one to go this time? So if that's yes. the case, we'll be going green with eight to go. Yeah, but we'll probably have a red flag with six to go. <laughs> and then remember, too, remember what Chase Elliott did on that last restart? Yes. He went three wide to the bottom from the inside of row two. So let's see if Keslowski does that. Does Keslowski go inside of row two? And then try to duplicate yeah. that move that he made, that Elliot made on the last restart. I think, I, I think the guy to watch out for here is Brad because he's got the fresher tires of the leaders. He and Suarez have the freshest tires, and Keslowski did go to the inside of row two, so I, he's the guy to watch right here. This is gonna be a good one. A hundred and six races since Brad Keslowski won in the Cup Series. For a guy that won a championship in 2012, it's a long time between wins. Yeah. So, who's going to have this one? It's anybody's guess. Four different winners in the only four races. Then we had a repeat winner. Hamlin inside, Elliot outside. They've already chosen on the radio. There we go. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, they had! They had it! They had the, if you're not first, you're last board. They've been listening to us. We've got fans trackside. So, here we go then. Time to go green. 
Is this going to be for the last time today? Or will we have more? The pace car will peel in. Danny Hamlin, Chase Elliott, all gets ready. We hit the accelerator. We are green flag running for nine laps to go here at the Texas Motor Speedway. It's a good restart as they three pull out. Oh, in, oh no, oh, contact on the new pack. Yep, okay, that's good. They've kept it going through one. Hamlin's on the low line and they're jumping around the oh, mid pack. And there's the caution. Last in for Val. And he saved it. He saved it, but we've gone yellow and he spins out backwards into the infield and we've gone yellow. But hold on, Chase Elliott was outside of Denny Hamlin. Who was the leader at the time of caution? Elliott! Has to be Elliott! Surely! Yeah, he he had made it, he made a wide turn or a wide entry into the corner and got to the outside of Hamlin. Now this because this is not the last lap of the race, <laughs> it's not the moment of caution, it's the previous pass loop. So we'll see who was in front when they passed the last loop. This was a crazy restart. I think this was a pinball effect. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Ty Dillon got into Zane Smith, who got into Kyle Larson, who went around. I just heard the 11. That's that, that's okay. happening. But Elliot was the leader at the time of caution. So are they going to give it back to Hamlin? Oh. But with seven to go, does that take us to overtime? No, that with, with this being a single car spin, I think this is going to be a pretty quick yellow. I think we're probably going to yeah. be able to go back green with three or four to go. Megan's just said it they didn't even been. make it five seconds without another caution. <laughs> There's the cautions at Texas comparison. Yeah, we, we well, that's how we opened up the show today, wasn't it, guys? We Oops. talked about this race track has produced so many yellows the Where last is? handful oh, of years, happened? and it's Your come true gone. again. Your camera's gone, JT. Okay. And now you're deafened. Okay. I'm not deafened. Oh, it says you are. <laughs> My camera is somewhere else. That's been that. Elliot is the leader. Oh, look at that. Wow. Look at the the uh, the previously passed loop. It looks like Elliot was ahead by the smallest margin. I think they're going to put Elliot to the lead here. Yes. They've just confirmed 9-11-1-6. So uh, that is, the, again, the rule is when it's not the last lap, it's the previously passed loop, and there's a loop, a, you know, electronic scoring loop, about every tenth or fifteen one-hundredths of a mile around the track. And at the previously passed loop before the yellow, Chase was ahead by, I mean, it was this much. So uh, Elliot God. now is the control car for this restart. Yes. My uh, camera has been like this when uh, your TV pictures went black because just in it, case yeah. I uh, needed to turn my camera back on, my camera's on my alt account and my voice is coming through my main account. So I can have both on at one time, just in case yours completely failed. Well... With six to go, 47 the three pass. Should be getting going soon. Boy, how the day has turned sideways for Kyle Larson. Ugh. Let's have a word with Alan Gustafan, the chief for Elliot. So, uh, you know, it's sad to lose Bob like that. So thinking about them, but yeah, I think we got a great shot. Super proud of the guys. I think Chase is uh, going out to get it done. All right, good luck. Thanks. What do you think then? Overtime? No, no, well, well, are you asking if we're going to overtime on this restart or if we will go to overtime? <laughs> Those are two different questions. We the, very the well ladder. may go. <laughs> well, they didn't take the one to go this time, so. It's midnight. Well, it's, it's now Monday. This race should have ended according to the schedule an hour ago. It's been a three uh, by hour. By the time we're... <laughs> And we're complete today, Josh. This will be longer than the 2018 race, which ran to 500 miles. Oh, God, you're yeah, right. Also, I should be in bed. I have a train in 14 hours' time. And I have a lot to do. I should be in bed. I have Donington to plan and get to for the touring cars. And I've got to imagine if we reach this point of the day, 
for you guys midnight. Yeah. And we still had 100 miles left, 67 laps. Oh. Thank God we cut this down to a 400-mile race. I mean, Matthew, do you remember the last time you, you joined us? And for me, it was like 4 a.m. when we get to Megan said, <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was doing it for me. I was like, no. Uh, that was after Japan as well. I was nearly ready to go. Bye-bye. Uh, Megan says, I'll clear your bed. When was Easter? Two weeks ago. Yeah. Come on, four to go. We'll restart with three. It'll effectively be a green-white checkered without an overtime. Just get it yes. done. There's Talladega, though, Matthew, from 2022. God, am I jealous that you got this. Yeah, last time Chase won. And, he, you know, he has never finished... Chase Elliott we're talking about, he, we, he has never finished in the top five on a mile-and-a-half track in the next-gen car. They didn't give one to go this time either. What are they doing? Three to go. They want they want to try and get an overtime as well because they want to eat this out. Don't forget, it's unlimited tries in an overtime as well. A green-white checkered. Oh. We must get to that white flag. And in NASCAR, it's not always it's strange to me because it's never like a penalty shootout in football. It's like it could theoretically last forever. Penalty shootout could last forever, yeah. And it did. I just want to mention too. Yeah. The um, I, what do we want to call it? Serendipity that Chase Elliott is on this long, winless drought, 42 races. He's trying to end it, and who does he have to beat? He has to beat Denny Hamlin. They've yeah. had a big history to the, over the last few years. And remember last year, one of the races that Chase missed yeah. was because he was suspended for dumping Denny Hamlin <laughs> and intentionally crashing him at Charlotte. So now it's these two, plus maybe a few others, that are going to go heads up for this win. Right. And it looks like we are getting one to go this time. So this will be a two-lap sprint with Elliott and Keselowski on long winless routes, Hamlin going for a third win, Chastain going for his first win of the season. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Chase Briscoe is lining up in row number four. He has not won since the spring of 2022 at Phoenix. Okay, Matthew, how about this? I take two to go, you take the last lap, you've got the call at the end. It's you started it. All right. You started, so you finish. You get your well, This is going to be a heck of a finish, one way or another. That's another song that I'm not going to get into. <laughs> Come on, what can Elliot do? It's not the first time we've had Yahoo and Hooters in the same sentence. I couldn't resist. It was right there. It was right there. I couldn't resist. Wow. I couldn't. I couldn't. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> Seriously, look. There they are. There they are. <laughs> I could, it's an open goal. I couldn't resist. So, this will be a green-white checkered, but inside the 400 miles. Elliott versus Hamlin and the rest of the field behind them. There's 32 cars on the lead lap. Blaney's at the back. What are we going to have? Green flag. Away we go. And again, Elliott and Hamlin make door bangs, but Chastain gets a good restart. Hamlin's going to go up high. Coming in line. Look at Keselowski running in third position. Hamlin comes down, swings it through one and two. They keep it. And Brad does a little bit too high, but it's a good run as they come out of turn two. Hamlin's got the run on the exit. Hamlin's going to take the lead of the race as we come down the back straight away. And there's contact from the back. Contact from the back. There's a big one from the back. They'll go yellow. And it's Hamlin spinning as well. Hamlin's oh. in the wall. There was contact from the back with the car drifting and Hamlin's gone round to bring out an overtime. Hamlin's out of the race. That's before the white flag. Does that mean we'll go to overtime? Yes. Yes. Wow. There was incredible. A, there was another spin further back on the back straightaway. I couldn't see who it was. Who? Gilliland. He dropped back. So he's dropped to 31st. There was another car that got sideways out of two. I spotted. And the, the crowd, uh, the crowd just loves this. Chase Elliott is beloved. 
Denny Hamlin. Everybody loves Damn. to hate Denny Hamlin. The crowd is eating every bit of this up. Two drivers that were never going to give an inch and two drivers that, quite frankly, don't really like each other. Mm. Diving into the same corner, battling for the win, you almost had the feeling only one on of there. those drivers were going to come out of that corner. That was aero. Yeah. Related. Yeah, no, nothing intentional from Chase. That totally, Hamlin just lost the air on the outside. Closes but my Twitter tab. You absolutely <laughs> had the feeling two drivers were going to go into that corner and only one was coming out, and that's exactly what happened. Wow. And I... Megan says, seriously, again, can they not have us caution for at least five seconds? Oh, the drama of NASCAR. My God. <sighs> this is getting a bit silly now. now. And, and, and now Chase survived that restart, but now he's going to have to survive another one. And he's going to have a very aggressive driver next to him again. It's going to be Ross Chastain. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. Brad Rest Kizlowski. yourselves. Brad's still in third, though. Keselowski's still got a shot here. If I was uh, Keselowski, I'd choose the low line this time. The high line didn't work. Absolutely. Yep, I agree. This is... My goodness. Third race running for overtime now as well. We were on such a good run. <laughs> should be should be a swift um swift restart though you would think yeah only a couple of laps i'd imagine six races now, is, that is that a is that a taylor swift restart <laughs> oh dear <laughs> tom tom we were talking earlier last time we were together for the Super Bowl. Yeah, there were plenty of taylor swift camera shots in that game that's all a blur. When even was that? February. February. Christ. Me and Megan were watching it, and we consumed quite a lot of whiskey in depression. <laughs> we were celebrating that we were we were supporting the 49ers and still do support the 49ers from, uh, with San Francisco as well. And uh, yeah, we we, we we were we were heartbroken at that last second. Megan said, "When will this race end?" <laughs> this was this race is due to end on Tuesday. <laughs> Please do stick well, this, this is this is another you know case of why we should start these races you know at two p.m. Eastern time instead of three forty-three. Yeah, our bedtime. I, I have noticed with a few American series actually have got strangely specific start times. IMSA <laughs> always likes to start at, at ten forty-eight. Rather than a yeah. welcome you know, you just think, to pre-race ceremonies you, that don't, aren't don't, timed but, perfectly. But what I don't understand is, do you, don't, because in the schedule it'll say, oh, 10.48 green. So put your pre-race ceremony at mm -hmm. like 10.13 and then you mm -hmm. can put your green flag at 10.30. I don't mm -hmm. care. Whatever. We, welcome we, to we, America. We, we, you um, are America preaching to the choir on that one. Oh, I no. promise you are preaching to the choir. We just... <laughs> 14 cautions. 14. I've got oh a feeling God. that this is going to be my first experience on a NASCAR call of multiple overtimes. Yeah. Choose oh, rule. Okay. Yes. Yeah, getting are. one to go this time. Go low, Brad. Go low. Good boy. Good boy. Good yeah. boy. Byron's gone high. That's going to be Shirts. fun. Chastain on the outside, Elliot on the inside, Byron on the outside, Keslowski on the inside, then it's Reddick outside, Suarez inside, Austin Dillon outside, inside Briscoe, then outside Hosfar, inside Priest. All right, well, now we'll get to have the conversation with them about not doing that to us, says Ross Chastain. There was no contact. What, you want about Ross? There was no contact at all between the 9 and the 11. I'm not saying anything. There might be contact on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving that one. Might... Pearl Harbor. I mean, it depends. So, to explain over time, it's a two lap shootout. If the leader takes the white flag, the next flag ends the race. Caution prior to the white flag does not end the race. Here we go then. Same rules apply. 
Matthew Owens will take you to the checkered. I'll have the start and we'll see where we go. Right, come on guys. Do this for me. Do this for me. Do this for me. Ready? Over time. Ready? 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 Everything ready? Pace cars in. Where's the car? Go, go, go. Green, 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 green. And they're not going. Now they're going. Into the Geico restart zone we go. Elliot up low. He's going to have it. Chastain's going to battle. Oh, and Chastain getting a little wiggle. Keselowski touching the back of Elliot. Through turn one, three oh. one. Contact again. Yellow's out. Hey. This is two, three cars for the back. And here we go again. Harrison Burton. There's and another one as well. Yeah, Kazgrala. It annoys me beyond belief. I think I said this at Daytona. It's like they don't know how to race. Risk management is not ever on the radar. It, and it it's beyond frustrating to watch. You know, this is one of the main problems with Green White Checker. And I'm a fan of Green White Checker. But one of the problems is, is that you have this race with no stakes mentality will just you know worst case scenario i turn around i get another buy it. it 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 you just end up with this and it, it's stupid i guarantee if we watch this back this will be another avoidable crash mm. completely avoidable for people who are getting paid very good money to to do this <laughs> megan says uh megan's coming to the commentary box Can oh I? no yeah. <laughs> what could go wrong <laughs> megan is on her way to the commentary box she has been watching Elliot, the last the way, yeah, she Elliot by the way, was definitively the leader at the time of caution, yeah. so Elliot will hold the lead. Just think, and I, I hope we get replay, just think of Daytona. We had that utterly pathetic crash because someone decided that pinning a throttle through a, a wreck was the, the best cause of action. Welcome to NASCAR. You know, it, 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 it annoys me beyond belief because you should be getting race bans for this stuff, but... It, it doesn't seem to happen. Just to explain to you quickly here, um, we've been under this now for 30 minutes. <laughs> right. Uh, if I was doing my stopwatches today, I would have to add more stopwatches for cautions. Welcoming to oh the commentary, Megan Birch, who's been watching. Do these guys have an aversion to <laughs> staying on the track or something? Because so far, they... I've been watching 10 minutes and I've seen them go off the track four times. We've had 15 cautions today. Most for just spins. Tra track record 16, Megan. A third of them in the past 15 minutes. Yes. Remember the track record of 16. That was in a 500 mile race. They've done 100 miles less today and we're about, about to break the record. I have oh, counted. And we're also... The we're also going to run longer than the majority of those uh, those, those races as well, Matthew. Well, we're all sitting around waiting for that trophy to be picked up, but nobody Three wants hours. to win it. <laughs> I have counted the <laughs> seconds Thank you, Murray. between the cautions. <laughs> None of them have reached five seconds. So we really are having a caution, an average of every five seconds. Save, 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 save. Coast all the way around here, Max oh. saving. So that's Chase Elliott. Yeah, now now we're talking about guys might not be able to go on fuel. Welcome to the most embarrassing part of NASCAR. Hey, guys. We can't get to the end. The drivers. More, more than a quarter of this race has been run under caution. Oh, a quarter. Sake. I believe that. <laughs> We've now, we were at 267 laps. We've done now 273. <sighs> There's the one to go. Elliot, low, Chastain high, Keslowski low, Byron high. Low, Briscoe as Same as, as, as before. Dylan's gone exact high. Exact same as before for the first three rows. Go on, Josh. It looks like I chose the wrong week to stop sniffing glue. <laughs> 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 that's a big hat. Big brain. Can't tell if that's a large hat or a little match. <laughs> that's a large hat. <laughs> Bit of both. He has a little man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. Come on. Anyway, we're coming to the Did you like the Hocus Pocus memes I sent you? I did, I did. Hamlin's now going, wait for me, I've got little legs. I consider Hamlin <laughs> to be venturous and right, 
I looked up. <coughs> Elliot is windy. I thought you might like Keslowski or one of your favourite drivers in third might win. That's why I told you to start watching. Right, anyway. Here we go. Will we get to the finish? Green, white checkers. No. That's all I want to know. <laughs> Sorry, but no. Star Wars. I want to go to bed. We're now 45 no. minutes after I was supposed to be in bed. I cleared your bed, by the no. way. Right, come on. Come on. Come on. You can just fall into it. Just let it go. Let it go to the end. Megan's here. It's our good luck charm. She hates cautions. We're all good. I, I love good. cautions. <laughs> come on. Pace I love going. cautions. They just don't like me. Green, 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 green. For the final time. And it will be the final time. We're racing. Chastain gets a good launch, but Elliot was waiting until the last possible second to hit the deck. Now, look at Brad Keselowski coming through. Chastain gets a tap for the back of Byron. They're all making it through turn one cleanly. Chastain's up high. Elliot's down low. He'll try and come up high to stop the run. And then look at Chastain. He's still side by side. Down the back stretch. It's wheel to wheel across the line. And there's contact. Wheel to wheel. Chastain on the high line. Elliot goes down low. We come out of turn four to take the white flag. The next Flag. The next flag ends the race. Turn about it, Matthew Owens. Chase Elliott will lead to the white flag. We are on the final lap. Ross Chastain and William Byron trying to run him down. Byron gets to third. Chastain climbs the banking in turn two. It's Chase Elliott, the leader. Here comes Byron. Oh. He gets to the back of Chastain. He turns Chastain into the wall. The caution comes out. This race is over as Chastain crashes and scurries down the back straight away and after a 42 race winless drought through all of the trials and tribulations it's going to lead to a Texas triumph for Chase Elliott who is once again a winner in the NASCAR Cup Series Chase Elliott wins in Texas Incredible. He didn't have to wait for Talladega Nights he did it here and it did end with a last lap crash for everybody Poor Chastain, he tried everything, but Chase Elliott wins, and it's Hooters all round tonight for dinner. Oh, second. Oh, and Braddy's second. Well done, Brad. Oh, he ended the drought with Hooters. <laughs> that works in two worlds. Oh, th thank God we got to the end. That's what she said. Well. Right. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> Byron is being uh, put down for that caution with Chastain. He made one mistake, wasn't he? <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just got that. I just got that. <laughs> Josh, he says. Please don't look at them. Yeah, Byron's being Pardon? put. You said Byron's being put down. And Megan said, he did one mistake. <laughs> As in put down, <laughs> shot, put down, like a, like a horse. Like in the Grand National. I didn't get that, that's quite funny. Actually. <laughs> oh. Let's take a look at it again. So Chastain will exit turn two. Byron goes down low. Chastain sweeps him in. Byron's going to get a better drag out the corner. And I think, yeah, look, he's lifting and coasting. He knew he was done. That was Chastain's fault, if anything. If he's not wall riding, he's wrecking. Yeah. Well, Byron was riding a rocket on that last restart. He was flying and just a big closing rate. That's such a shame for Ross. Uh, the crowd is going to go crazy here. They've waited a long time for their beloved superstar to go back to victory lane. Elliot has turned around. He's now going to go the wrong way here so he can salute the crowd. Look at the fan. Oh, my oh, gosh. Wow. They're just flooding out of their seats to get to the fence to take in the sport's most popular driver finally winning 42 race winless drought snapped here today in texas and uh defeated denny hamlin to do it which i'm sure makes the win for these fans all that much sweeter now if chase said it was smart here what he should say to the crowd is i beat the hated driver <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh, just wait into the absolutely slaughtered by nascar twitter for what i just said about chastain what did you say <laughs> if uh he's not wall riding he's wrecking oh my god <laughs> Like wreck it, right? Ben Ben just said Mike Joy just had a Rick Allen moment calling Byron Keslowski. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh -huh. Yikes. Well. 
when uh when Chase comes to a stop right here, is he actually gonna stop? We send it. Yeah, he'll he'll stop. They'll do the interview here know. with either Jamie or Maybe Regan. We are going to hear the biggest explosion from this crowd. I've turned up the audio. Oh wow! That's the crowd. He's getting out of the car. Let's enjoy the moment. going to go into this the crowd. Been a long time coming. Well, it's got to... He's going to get a check of flag from the official. That's special. Bummer. That's special. I'm showing you what. Yeah. If you think, if you think a Talladega crowd is wild normally, they're going to be really wild next week coming off. Uh, oh, my Lord. You, you guys, by the way. Right. Well, that wasn't Talladega Nights, and that wasn't even a Texas Motor Speedway. That was a Texas Chainsaw Massacre race, and Chase Elliott won it. Let's go down for the interviews. Five. We can swim. I got the same cue. We see the look of relief on Chase Elliott's face. The 42 race drought is over. You drove intensely today. You did everything just right. How does it feel? Oh, man, it couldn't feel any better. Uh, First off, thanks to everybody that came out today. You guys are unbelievable. Um, what a, uh, you know, what, what a, <laughs> Hooters has been a partner of ours for a number of years now, and it's been a, a dream of mine to uh, pay respect to the late Alan Kowicki and, and um, driving this car to a victory and being able to do a Polish victory lap and um, just uh, really crazy how things mm. You know, came full circle there in that moment. It was pretty emotional for me. Just, you know, he, he beat dad back in the day, and here we are, you know, sharing, uh, you know, his, his sponsor and, and having an opportunity to win today. So just, uh, man, couldn't be, uh, just couldn't be more grateful for this journey and, and kind of the, the path that, uh, you know, hasn't always been fun, but, you know, certainly have enjoyed working with our guys. We've been um, just working really hard and really well together. and. Um, like I said, it hadn't always been fun, but we've enjoyed the fight together. You mentioned you guys have been fighting together today. It was a fight on the racetrack all day long. That race looked like it was crazy to drive. How intense was it on the track with all the slipping and slide? Yeah, it was just crazy. This place is just so, uh, you know, so sketchy. And, and you know, I, I, I don't, I haven't seen a replay of, uh, you know, of Denny and, and us. I don't really know. I didn't feel like I did anything super uh crazy there any more than anybody's ever done to me just had to run forward and i, I want to look at it but um i didn't feel like i did anything to to crash him i think just uh the circumstances but nonetheless apologies to him if so but um couldn't be more proud of our team thanks to uh you know our partners at napa and, and chevrolet everybody hendrick motorsports had a big week last week boss thank you uh, thank you for sticking with me and just um really really proud of this and uh, appreciate all, all the folks back home that, that have stuck with me and, and uh, helped us get back on track. Chase Elliott, your winner in Texas. Let's catch up with everybody else. Jamie's got a second. And Brad Keselowski brings it home third. And Brad, best finish at Texas since 2015. You weren't very optimistic coming into this one. How did you overcome and get this great finish today? Yeah, well, I'm not sure we finished third. I got to see the replay from NASCAR on that first before I'm going to concede that. But, uh, uh, you know, we, we didn't have a ton of speed. You know, honestly, like, I'm, I'm more frustrated than anything because I feel like we have a great team and we don't have the speed to go with it. And we're doing all we can do to overcome that. You know, the driver in me is frustrated because I feel like these are races I'm, I'm good enough to win and we don't have the speed to do it. And the owner is mad as hell because it's my fault for not making the cars faster. So, uh, but still proud of the team that we have the, the pit stops and the strategy and execution to put ourselves in position to get a finish we probably didn't deserve, but earned with kind of some never give up spirit in him. 
Well done. We'll see you at the Super Speedway next Thank week. You. Looking forward to it. Mike. Josh. Yes. If I could just jump in for a minute, just a uh, tweet coming through. Ross Chastain politely declined comment after leaving the infield care centre. Oh. Oh, okay. And he didn't look too happy as he walked down. Yeah. He... Oh, thing. hello. He looks too really annoyed. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I got excited there for a second. Yeah, I did. I saw... Well... Never mind. Yeah. So, I thought... Was that Chastain who gave him the handshake? No, that was teammate Byron. No, I thought it was Byron. He's finished in third. Oh, well, I was hoping for a fight. It looks like we're not going to get it. And I think that the World Feed's about to sign off as well, which would usually be the case I don't know, me. Josh. What? We could get something with Chastain and Byron. Really? Maybe. Well, I would rather have my bed. Yes, me too. <laughs> anything. Thank you, Josh, for uh, tea, even. Uh, <laughs> so, right. yeah. How do we wrap up then? Come on then, Matthew. How, what, what, what do you want to do here? I just want to make mention it's Chase Elliott's 19th career win, so that draws him level for 44th most all time with Davey Allison, Buddy Baker, Greg Biffle, and Fonty Flock. Those are two Hall of Famers right there, and Buddy Baker and Davey Allison. It's a tremendous win for Chase, and he did a great job surviving those late restarts. Defeated Denny Hamlin, who they've had so many run ins in the past. Uh, this is a terrific moment for NASCAR. Um, when the sport's most popular driver goes on a winning uh, or a winless drought like that and can break it, that's only going to provide so much momentum heading to, guess where, Talladega, one of our most exciting tracks. It's going to be a sellout crowd, and Chase goes in as the winner from this race. It, it's going to be a tremendous week next week, um, but it, uh, what a great, great win for Chase Elliott. I was going to say a great race. I don't know if it was a great race, <laughs> but it is a great win for Chase Elliott after all those trials and tribulations that it's been for him since that last win. Think of all the races he missed. He missed seven races last year, six to injury, one to suspension, didn't win, didn't make the playoffs. And to get this win, um, that's a massive moment for him and for the sport. Uh, so congratulations to Chase and, and a real congratulations to Alan Gustafson. This guy has been killed on social media. Whenever you're the crew chief of the most popular driver, you're, you're going to get killed on social media. I'm very happy for uh, for Alan Gustafson, genuinely one of the nicest guys in the garage. Um, other than that, uh, thank you to all of you for uh, putting this on today. Uh, we can sign off of YouTube, and then we'll do a quick sign off on USRN as well. But this was a lot of fun, and... Um, I, I appreciate all uh, all that you guys did today. It was a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it too. I certainly did. And uh, thank you as well for uh, stepping into the box and helping out when I couldn't make it the start. And vice versa, we stepping in to helping with USON as well. Team up at a good time. And of course, here on JB Motorsports, next time out, uh, myself, Josh T and Tom Dillon won't be here. Uh, it will be Matthew Owens and Matt White on radio coverage to take you through the next round at Talladega. They will have the airwaves uh, for the three and a half hours while we all do Long Beach. And it will also be my birthday. So I get to do Long Beach, then I get to go. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> And then I've got uh, a lot more. So that's going to be fun. We will next be back in about three weeks' time. The next couple of races are Matthews. And are you looking forward to that, Matthew? Looking forward to Talladega. Looking mm. forward to Dover. I can't remember the last time I did a Dover race, so I'm very excited for that. It was a good race last year that Martin Truex Jr. won. But yeah, Talladega and Dover will be a terrific next couple. And then, then we go into the month of May, my favorite mm -hmm. month. Busy, 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 and uh, we'll do all the practice sessions, and then we team up for IndyCar as well, the 500 qualifying days. So that's going to be fun. I hope so, yeah. My thanks to Megan, who's stepping in and giving us her opinion when we went green. Uh, my thanks to Josh T. <laughs> my thanks to Tom Dillon. My thanks to Matthew Ernst. My thanks to all of you at home or here on JB Motorsports. We're staying on USRN, but here on YouTube and Twitch, we conclude a very busy day from the Lone Star State. It's Chase Elliott, who's victorious. Matthew Ernst and Matt White, we'll see you next time out when we go to Talladega. See you soon. Bye-bye.